This video is brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solution for everyone and everywhere. And this video is also brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to the Denver, Colorado area where we have four electric pickup trucks behind me. The F-150 Lightning, the Rivian R1T, Chevy Silverado Electric, and the Tesla Cybertruck. And a lot of you guys have been asking for more towing content to see how these vehicles work when you actually have to do truck stuff with them. So not only are we going to tow with these vehicles today, I have put the exact same trailer with the exact same load on all four of them and we're not just driving on flat ground. We are gonna go over the entire Rocky Mountain range twice. We're gonna be towing a little race between all the trucks from Denver to Grand Junction, up over 10,000 feet of elevation and back down and then back here to Denver to see who can get back to the starting point first. This is certainly crazy. I'm going to walk you through the treks, the trucks, the specifications, the trailers, and the load that we're using. We're all towing actually Tesla Model 3s. And well, it's going to be quite an exciting video, but let's get through the testing procedures in the truck so we can get to towing as soon as possible. As per usual, this will be a long and epic comparison test. So I wanted to mention, we'll have a special episode on the Out of Spec podcast airing shortly after this, which will be a shorter way to consume the data if you're interested. But if you want to experience the full exciting journey now, stay tuned right here after a short message on today's sponsor. A huge thanks to ChemPower for sponsoring this episode. You guys know I'm a huge fan of ChemPower chargers for many reasons, but ultimately I love their flexibility and scalability. Essentially they have rack powered DC chargers, which means especially in a lot of fleet customers, you have power limitations when chargers first go in and then site upgrades can take a while. So you can put in a full rack to handle DC charging capability, you can put in maybe two or 300 kilowatts and then expand as you get more power capacity to your site. Uber flexible. The way ChemPower works is you have your main AC-DC rectifiers that are unbelievably reliable in an off-board cabinet. And then satellites that you can place up to 80 meters away. I mean, really far away, you can put these satellites. Really awesome stuff. It's fantastic for fleet use. It's fantastic for actually even mining use deep underground. If you're an OE looking to test in harsh environments, for example, you gotta make sure your cars charge in the coldest climates. You need the toughest charging solutions. And of course, that's going to be ChemPower. So huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video, you should definitely check them out if you're looking for high power DC fast charging. Starting off with the Ford F-150 Lightning. This actually has the most towing tech because it's optioned with the towing technology package. It gives you cameras everywhere, whole bunch of knobs, buttons, switches, and graphs in the infotainment system to help with trailering in an electric truck. It helps you with range estimates, whole bunch of other things. This truck also has great thermal management, a very consistent charge curve, and we have the official NACS to CCS adapter, so this truck can use Tesla supercharger or public CCS stations. Jordan's going to be driving this truck and hooked up to it is my colleague Ryan's Tesla Model 3. Now what's interesting is we're using a few different variants of Model 3 for this test so we've had to had to add some ballast weight to this and the white Model 3 because they're both the standard range versions and not the dual motor performance version, so they all weigh exactly the same. Let's come on over here. This is the Rivian R1T. This is my truck. This is the quad motor large battery pack. This truck has been towing all across America many times with loads way heavier than these. This is about 7,000 pounds just over of weight when you include the vehicle and the trailer. Uh, maybe actually, can we do the math on that? It's 4,000. It's like 6,500 pounds, right? Yeah, because the trailer's like 2,100. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, okay, low to mid 6,000 pound range. Sorry for swaying the audience there. Um, and so the Rivian R1T has a front charging port right up front, which this is going to be a huge advantage today. Maybe not having to unhook where vehicles with a rear charging port 
definitely will have to unhook. Right now, charging infrastructure and electric vehicles is really tough. Uh, very few stations have an actual trailer pull through. But then if you don't wanna charge at all, you could just drive this, uh, which this is the one I'm most excited about here because I tow a lot with electric vehicles and well, this has just got the most range, the biggest battery and the fastest charging. This is the Silverado EV 4WT. It's rated at 450 miles in the EPA cycle. And even with my trailer on the back of it, it's predicting almost 300 miles of range after learning the load. So I think I'm gonna win this whole thing easily in the Silverado, but by how much, that's what I wanna know. And the reason I'm taking this one is truly because um, I, I, this is the truck that's built for this kind of stuff. Towing over long distance with electric has always been, I wouldn't say impossible, but impractical. And this actually starts to get into the realm of practicality if you truly wanna drive an electric vehicle. And then over here, we have our Tesla Cybertruck. This is our tri-motor Cyber Beast. Um, we have done a bunch with this vehicle. It has over 5,000 miles on it now of towing and range testing and road tripping across the country. And it's just been an incredible experience to uh, spend some time with this. Timon's gonna be driving this one and it has steer by wire, which actually makes it kind of twitchy while towing. So I'm really curious to see how he does uh, uh, with this one but uh, again we're all towing model threes on u-haul trailers not sponsored yet maybe one day i don't know do we want u-haul as a sponsor time in no okay don't sponsor us u-haul uh why not they're cool i love u-haul i use them all the time the trailers are great they're aluminum they're actually like a good trailer yeah they're ugly but they're nice <laughs> anyway um everyone knows what they need to know about the cyber truck so ultimately um jordan's in the f-150 lightning andreas is in the rivian I'm going to be in the Silverado and Timon's taking the Cybertruck. Front charge port, rear charge port uh, will make a difference. Thermal management certainly will come into play with all the crazy elevation changes and then having to fast charge after climbing mountains as an example. And so I'm really curious to see what happens. Every truck right now is charged to 100% state of charge. And let's just go for it. Let's not make this a super long video. Let's just get in and go. We have a one rule, which is five over the speed limit. Uh, no more than that. We have one checkpoint, which I think we're gonna use a Starbucks in Grand Junction since our chargers are all in a little bit different places. You have to get a photo of your truck in front of Starbucks and then come back here and meet in this parking lot. Whoever makes it back here first wins. That's the goal. So um, yeah, let's just go. We have the F-150 Lightning and the Rivian. So I guess uh, I should just walk everyone through the Model 3s. We have the rear wheel drives on the F-150 Lightning and the Rivian. So those are the lighter cars, but we have put sandbags in them to compensate. So they all weigh the same amount, which thanks to Andreas for taking care of all of that this morning. It was quite a challenge doing math on vehicle weights and everything, but they should be all identical. I have my Tesla Model 3 Performance on the back of the Silverado EV. This is, again, the heaviest car without ballast. And and uh, Andreas is towing his Model 3. So we have Andreas's three, Ryan's three, my three. And this is Drew's Model 3 from Martian Wheels. And actually, this is kind of a cool showcase opportunity. This is Drew's new Martian wheel. Uh, incredible price, really strong wheel, new from Martian Wheels. He didn't ask me to plug it, but uh, I'm going to because I love Martian Wheels. I run them on my cars. I have the MW03s on that Model 3. I have the MW05s on my Model S. And this is the new wheel. To be honest, I don't even know what it's called, but it's cool. It's gonna be a much more cost-effective option. It's a very high volume for them, so I'm very excited to see how that does for Martian wheels. Timon, just wanna go through tow settings for you in the Cybertruck. Alrighty. You're at 100%. What uh, what miles does it show? Uh, you just tap it there. 301. That's the most it ever charges to. It hasn't ever <laughs> lost one. Oh, great. Yeah. I, I would hope not. It only has 5,000 miles. Yeah, but, so. but very rough 5,000 miles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so if you go to towing and hauling, you have a couple different options here. The trailer brake boost doesn't apply because we don't have electric trailer brakes. Okay. We've got the surge brake on these um, and brake gain doesn't matter. There is a right scroll wheel that won't work in this anyway because no trailer brakes. The only setting you have is adaptive regenerative braking, which will increase the amount of regen to compensate for the load. But keep in mind, we just did the rustic, what do we call it again? Rustic loop the rustic ring and uh this thing kills regen very early on so you just want to be careful and, and cover the friction brakes on it will do um the other suggestion i would have is if you uh, go to dynamics you should keep it in uh oh sorry control yeah no there you go uh focused ride and handling will keep the dampers stiffer which should help control some of the weight Sweet. these always have just a bit more tongue weight than i'd like but is what it is oh, well. all right so we'll see you along the way we'll all roll out together 
Um, my Silverado is easy in terms of a towing mode. I just hit one button. It adjusts the stability control, the throttle, the regen, everything to go into a towing preset setting. It's this button right here. And you can see, well, it's actually off right now. Let me turn it on. When I disengage it, you can see the range just goes up again, all the way up to 450 miles. But if I click towing, then it'll start going back down. It is kind of fun to watch it work. I also have pretty good route planning with a Google integrated system that I think says I can make it to Grand Junction. Over in the F-150 Lightning, I've configured a trailer. You can actually tell it the weight, the uh, width, the height, everything that the F-150 needs to know about the trailer. And I've configured it as the Model 3. So if you go to home and then towing, U-Haul Model 3. U-Haul Model 3. And it's predicting 162.4 miles of trailer range per full charge. That's pretty good, dude. We'll see how, how accurate it is. You know, there's two things that always impact range while towing. It's weight and arrow. And arrow on flat ground is always the bigger impact than weight. Yeah. However, we're towing through the mountains where weight does make a difference. A lot of variables. It means you'll have to pull it up the hill, but then you'll regen it on the downhill. And then if you're in the Rivian or Cybertruck, you get pretty early regen limits. Yep. So then you don't actually get the benefit of regen. I'm really curious to see if you get any regen limitation with this i'll find out yeah we'll keep everyone updated that'll be fun and then we have andreas in the r1t this truck's all dirty because we just used it as a <laughs> weight ballast so andreas if you go into towing mode okay i just want to show everyone how it's okay. uh so you click the four tires down there yep. and then you're in trailers so we have it as jeff loaded which is actually meant for my trailer but it's okay it works fine i reset it so um, oh nice great yeah. yeah cool and then if you go to on road mm -hmm. you can adjust your drive mode settings so you're in standard suspension yeah. um and you have the ride in firm what was your opinion on that uh amazing like very smooth i was surprised what a breeze it is to tow in this ribbon uh, okay yeah but i still gotta make it through the rockies so you know <laughs> yeah so you're i think um you know one one thing we're all probably not going to do is tow at super low state of charge below five percent yeah it's really rough on the batteries right, just doing exactly. constant load but if we have to do it we'll do it yeah. so uh we paid for the battery we'll use all the battery exactly. that that's what i say yeah, used to clip it on, so. and uh did you put the weight ballast in the cars uh yeah the sandbags you mean yeah yeah i did yeah great well, thank I, you i sandbag my model three <laughs> you literally did <laughs> well thank you very much for all of that appreciate it and um yeah, I guess we're going to Grand Junction and back. So you yeah. have climate control off? Yeah. Nice. Off course. Yeah, okay. really eking out every last drop here. Yeah, <laughs> some energy. yeah, I'll be asleep at home by the time you make it back here. <laughs> All right, this is fun, super cool. Let's roll. The man can't help it. He just stops and films. <laughs> Navigate to Electrify America in Grand Junction, Colorado. It should be simple. Here's what I found near Grand Junction, Colorado. None of these are near Grand Junction, Colorado. Literally nothing. So this navigation can't tell you where anything is if you're looking in a different city, unless you just say the exact address, which is really frustrating. So I'm going to attempt to go to Edwards, which is around 100 miles away. So let's see. So Edwards, yeah. So we will be going in through the Rockies here at 70. And uh, it says I will get there with 39 miles left. All right, we're about to head off. I'm in the Cybertruck and it's saying to go to Edwards, which is 100 miles away. It says it's going to do 300, but I assuming that's measuring without the trailer and i guess we'll see and keep you updated we're all loaded up now we're just waiting on kyle to stop filming but this is my biggest gripe the tonneau cover you can't see anything because it's blocked off and the model 3 would block it either way so i kind of wish that you could link your model 3 and the cybertruck to use the model 3's rear camera while towing and that'd be a pretty neat feature. That way you could actually see what's right behind you. Navigate to 2504 Grand Army of the Republic Highway in Grand Junction, Colorado. Please try again. Navigate to Sam's Club in Grand Junction, Colorado. 
No results found. How bad can this be? Fine, I'll do it myself. All right, finally got the right address. It, of course, is slightly different naming convention than Google. Maybe that's why I couldn't find it. Um, but it's saying I'll make it in four hours or less, which is highly unlikely. And it's saying I have maybe one charging stop. Well, now it's saying, now it doesn't know I'm towing. Gosh. Or does it? And now it says active. Now it just thinks I can do 267 miles on a charge. There goes everyone. We're at least we're leaving before sunset. The original plan was to leave this morning. Um, as you can tell, that is not morning time. But, say la vie, this is gonna be a fun trip. Beautiful trip. I'm glad we're at least hitting some of it with daylight hours. But um, yeah, my goal is to make it to Grand Junction by sunset, but we shall see. All right, we're in the Silverado. Watch and learn how this is done. We got to charge up in Grand Junction and then come back to here. So I'm going to click Grand Junction. It already knows I have a trailer on it. It says I'll make it with 38%. I may not even have to charge in Grand Junction. We might charge closer back to here. I don't actually know if I could do 230 miles of towing over the Rockies, but uh, it says 237 miles and 277. The overall elevation to Grand Junction is actually a loss of almost 1,000 feet. So um, it might be easier getting there than coming back, but uh, let's do it. Hell yeah, this is awesome. All towing Tesla Model 3s. Well, we are pulling out of the Lakewood Supercharger and Electrify America station, which is why we use this. I should have also mentioned the Rivian can use Tesla superchargers. We have two official NACS to Tesla adapters. Shout out to the Emerald City Rivian Club for sending us theirs for this video. So the Rivian can use superchargers if they need to. There's also some other stuff uh, that we're going to be using it for against the lightning. So uh, yeah, this is going to be awesome. So we've got... Really, I'm the only truck that can't use superchargers here. Both, you know, the Cybertruck really could only use superchargers. The CCS adapter doesn't really fit without pulling the side of the truck off. The Lightning can use superchargers or EA. The Rivian can use superchargers, EA, and the Rivian Adventure Network, and also all the charge point stations uh, those guys can use. And I'm, I can use the charge point stations, EA, and EVGO, whatever's in between. Strategy-wise, with the Lightning, I think my plan is to try to stretch it to Edwards, but I have a bailout opportunity in Silverthorne slash Frisco area. And I am thinking I might try to stick with Electrify America. Um, I don't really have much of a difference in terms of charging experience between EA and Tesla. They should all work fine, but I will be keeping an eye on the apps also to see how many charges are available. Fortunately, both Tesla and EA actually tell you how many stations are available, if there's any offline, etc. So I'll kind of have to play it by ear as I get closer. I really don't want to wait in line, but that's definitely a possibility. This is the weekend in the mountains in Colorado. We are already behind, and this is gonna be a, a long light, I think. There's a sick looking Model X over here. Oh my God, and I keep thinking I'm being tailgated by the Model 3. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm following timing in the Cybertruck, and I just keep thinking someone's tailgating me, but it's just my own car on my trailer. Uh, crazy, so. Hopefully the other guys, they got stuck in a light. They'll catch up here momentarily. We'll wait on the highway. We'll cruise up the hill together as a, a pair of all of us. And yeah, I am just loving the Silverado. This thing is so beefy. It's crazy. Um, huge battery, 215 kilowatt hours plus or minus usable. I think we calculated 217 we pulled out of it, but it'll be less while towing because it'll be under some more load. And um, yeah, just huge capacity, huge braking performance. Truck already weighs like 9,000 pounds or something crazy. It's it's maybe high sevens, low eights. And it's, uh, yeah, you can't even feel that there's a trailer hooked up to this thing. So this is what this truck is built for. Honestly, if you're buying a battery this big, you use it for towing. And hopefully this video will show why. That's what I want to see at least because I might want one of these after we're done with the Cybertruck after a year or a year and a half. Timon's nailing it. Oh, he's going for the fast approach. Burn juice, charge fast, out of spec style. And we're merging onto the highway. I am currently in the lead. Kyle is two cars behind me. I'm gonna go merge. And everyone stares at this car. Um, interestingly enough, according to PlugShare, you can actually toggle a filter that says trailer friendly. And both Silverthorne slash Frisco and 
Glenwood Springs are on that list. Whereas Edwards isn't. Although I've charged at Edwards and it should be fine, we're just gonna have to see. Not all the trucks made it out on the same stoplight, and I think that's a little bit unfair. So Timon and I agreed, we're gonna go pretty slow, 55 miles an hour, let the guys catch up. Once the Rivian and the Lightning catch up to uh, me and the Silverado and the Cybertruck, then we will uh, you know, be able just to maximize and uh, you know, plan our charging stops. We all can go the same speed. We can only go five over, and some folks may choose to go even slower. And look what's coming up over here, a new Model 3 Highland. This is the first one I've actually seen on the roads, very cool. And look at that, that is a brand new Model 3. That's pretty cool, I haven't seen one of those yet, and we are braking. It's very jolty when braking, uh, it's just how the trailer system works, I guess. There's Kyle, but that new Model 3 looked pretty good. I didn't get it on camera, but this Lexus GX470 just straight up cut me off, like, I was slowing down with the trailer, trying to be cautious, and he just instantly cut my slowdown time in half. Can't trust those GX470 owners. All righty, let's go. All right, I'm also a bit fearful of the weather, but we'll see. Um, Andreas has studded tires, which is a great benefit if we do hit snow, but uh, unfortunately, they'll be probably impacting his range a bit if it's not for the snow. Probably not a ton, but there, there might be some being an issue. Looks like we might see some weather, but I'm sure we'll be fine. So as we start the climb up the hogback, this is where we do our driver assistance testing. Um, I actually have some cool towing features. So the Rivian, uh, as an example, doesn't even allow adaptive cruise control when towing. The Cybertruck does. The Lightning allows lane centering while towing. Not hands-free blue cruise, but lane centering. And that's the only truck here with a full driver assistance suite available while towing. And uh, here though, I'm cruising up the hill and I've got adaptive cruise control built for towing. You'll notice that gap adjust, adjust specific for towing, which is great. Always leaves a bit more than without towing. We are on the uphill and the guys are just about to catch up to us. So we're only doing 55, but we'll all do a little bit faster in a bit. But uh, as the ID4 goes past, we are just sitting at 125 kilowatt output. Uh, it's kind of cool that the uh, Silverado gives you exact kilowatt output like the Bolt does. Uh, I really love that. And it uh, makes you appreciate how Truly, a 125 kilowatt charger or a 150 kilowatt charger, that's about the same amount of force that's pulling us up the hill right now. And uh, this thing can charge at 377 kilowatts peak, which is wild. And we're starting the climb. This is where the efficiency will be fascinating. We literally charged at basically the bottom of a hill. So by the time I get to Eisenhower Tunner, Tunnel, I'm expecting this miles per kilowatt hour to be absolutely abysmal. So as far as towing performance, this F-150 is really good at it. I've towed a lot of different things with this truck. We all have actually here at Spec. Um, and you can't really tell you have a trailer. Uh, I know this is not the heaviest trailer. This is about four, uh, 6,500 pounds altogether, roughly. So we are definitely not at the towing limitations, but that's okay. This is definitely the most challenging stretch of I-70 or actually, actually interstate in the country. Um, especially given the length. So basically 230-ish miles from our start to our turnaround point in Grand Junction before we head back. So we're looking at under 500 miles round trip, but that is all pretty much mountainous roads. There are a couple stretches after Vail where it's just kind of flat and a bit higher speed, um, but that's gonna be interesting. We'll see how fast these guys are comfortable towing. Um, I think these trailers are rated for you know, they say to go 55 to play it safe. The tires and the trailers are rated for 85 or so, 87 miles an hour, I think, officially. So we'll see how all of our strategies vary here. But uh, oh, here comes this GX again. Blowing my doors off. <laughs> Just sitting pegged at 150 kilowatts pulling us up this hill. Wow. It's definitely not the heaviest load, but you do feel it when you have to start climbing. And we have lost 9% state of charge, which is a significant amount for such a big battery pack in a short distance. 
So I just missed the notification, but it said uh, range revised due to conditions or whatever. It, it can tell I am being, I'm towing, <laughs> which is good. Like, but it says tow haul mode and then it went up to 280 miles range and now it's correcting itself. So now it's saying 183 miles, which is still highly optimistic, I think. Also back here in the navigation, it said chargers need to be added. Do you want them to do it automatically or browse for chargers? I went ahead and selected automatic. So we'll see what it gives me. At the top of the first climb, you guys are familiar with this uh, route. If you watch any of the hogback videos, we are at 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which is a lot better than I was expecting for the hill climb. So really curious to see how the efficiency of the Silverado ends up being as we compare it to the other vehicles on this test. a few miles into our trip and people are already like driving weird slowing down cutting in front of us to try and get pictures of the cyber truck it is just so aggravatingly annoying when people do that kind of thing driving this thing around is definitely a hazard that transit van up there slowed down in the middle lane to do 40 miles an hour on the freeway just so that the sun could get a, a video of the cyber truck i mean it's cool and all but i definitely don't appreciate them try starting traffic and slowing everyone down which could lead to a huge hazard also another thing that's super annoying is this what is it doing like it knows there's a car behind it, it knows we're in tow haul mode and it's just freaking out like can it just be stationary and not do anything or just like not show that we are still climbing and i think actually our efficiency was not one mile per kilowatt hour <laughs> i think the silverado just like starts at two and then it builds you away from that so it has some, some like we all reset our trip computers like after we got on the highway at the same point so uh was like right at the start of the first hill climb because honestly we forgot uh but we all you know, made sure we reset together and yeah now we're at 0. 0.7 see that seems more reasonable that's what i would be expecting something like that just ripping the juice to get up here. Yeah, so there must be some inertia in that trip computer calculation, the Silverado. Either way, beautiful day. The roads are tight and twisty as always. Uh, the whole crew is together now. I can see everyone back here in the mirror. So there's the Cybertruck and the Lightning. Rivian's right back there as well. As we're going downhill, still at quite high state of charge. The most amount of regen I can get is about 130 kilowatts. Uh, but then, since I have one pedal driving on high in the Silverado, it actually blends friction brakes. And personally, I like the idea from a consistency and driving perspective, but I'd really like to know when I've sort of maxed out regen and when I'm using friction brakes to manage, manage brake temperatures. So yeah, that's kind of the idea here, but uh, yeah, I know I can do 130 kilowatt regen, so until I hit that limit, I know I'm not using friction brakes, so that's how I'm approaching it in this truck to try and just keep the brakes as cool as possible because that's something you always have to think about when towing. I'm set to 51, so I can go six over because GPS uh, adjusted, it's, uh, so it's basically one under the Rivian. Yeah, so I always go six over. I truck is just uh, to Kyle and uh, Jordan about this. And I just did, get a regenerative braking reduced warning uh, which makes sense because we had like steep grades right we were going downhill for two miles uh, six percent I uh, believe so which uh, okay, let me avoid those potholes here um, which is pretty rough on battery right like re regenerative braking uh, creates heat as well I'm not sure if this is the exact reason why on the Rivian it um, it, it reduces the regen but um, yeah, actually it just went back, so you could actually see it. Like here's this gauge, it fell out of the gas, it turns green. Yeah, so there's the region. Uh, and then there's a little buffer zone once it gets reduced. So yeah, uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Even ahead of the big hill climb up to the tunnel, speed is playing a factor. The speed limit's currently 60 miles an hour. So I'm doing 65 and I'm noticing we're pulling away from the lightning a little bit. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but it brings up a good point, which is especially with increased uh, stuff behind you, the aero drag increases at an exponential rate the faster you go. So uh, in fact, there is a speed, I'm sure that can equal you know, the perfect cruising speed. It's always hard to know what it is. Typically you can't drive that fast without a trailer. You would always drive as fast as you can and charge as fast as you can. 
uh, that's the fastest way to road trip travel. But with a trailer with extra load, with extra weight like we have here on these vehicles, well, maybe a different approach would be to actually go a little bit slower and extend your range, especially if you can make it to another charging stop. At least the case in the Silverado, it's still indicating quite a high arrival state of charge in Grand Junction. So I'm just gonna go as fast as I can, which is now 70 miles an hour indicated by that sign. Traffic is a concern, of course, or at least a consideration. So yeah, that's my approach is just full send this thing and use my big battery for the extra range. And if I need to charge, I got the fastest charging speeds out of anyone. We're making our way through past Idaho Springs by five, 10 miles, and I've already burned through 30 or 29%, which we'll see how it goes on the downhill. It still says that I'm arriving with 54%. It said 50 earlier. And Jordan was behind me a little bit ago. I'm just pacing Kyle now. And it seems like Jordan's fallen back a few cars. I think he's taking the slow strategy, trying to maximize his range. Man, I just pulled out how to make a pass in the Silverado and this thing has got freaking just solid torque. Just put my foot down, you can feel the whole thing flex over and it's just digging. It's awesome, look at this, just wide open throttle right here, just to show you guys. So consistent. I mean, you try doing that with any combustion truck. And I know any of these electric trucks are honestly probably even more powerful than this one, but it's just crazy how electric is so great for towing as we make our way back up to 70 miles an hour that we can drive here. So let's just go for a pass of these combustion vehicles, not even towing and haul ass up the hill. I'm not sure if the other guys will take the same approach, but I'm taking the Big speed, big power. Looks like Timon is as well in the Cybertruck. He's right back there behind the MDX. He's boogieing. <laughs> this is awesome. Love it. Electric truck towing in the mountains. So much fun. Hello, sir. <laughs> Loser. Come on, people. Let me merge. I'm on a race here. By the way, we're passing Silver Plume, which has one of the best coffee shops in the entire Rocky Mountain region. Huge recommendation from me. Not sponsored, uh, but perhaps we can work something out. It'd be cool if they had a charger there, but it is a very small town. Heading up to Eisenhower, we're all gonna report our efficiency and consumption and state of charge and everything once we get there. I think we are doing pretty well with traffic too. Uh, if we had an earlier start like we originally planned, we might have actually hit some traffic of people heading into the mountains. But because we started mid-afternoon, I think pretty much all the people heading into the mountains, I've already made it into the mountains. So that actually worked out to our advantage, interestingly enough, even though now I'm bummed about getting home super late at night. <sighs> <laughs> just cruising at five over the limit they were allowed to do it's still freaking out uh to 60 percent and it says that we're arriving with uh 56 percent i don't think that's accurately gonna work we're at 0.7 miles per kilowatt hour 43.3 miles since we reset i'm sure uh the other trucks are pretty much about the same as well so really using them and uh my state of charge that I'm at, 70% state of charge. All right, heading into the tunnel at 11,000 feet elevation. That's like, it's nothing. I've still got 58% state of charge. Imagine if we stopped our test here and called it like the Ike glove or something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ike is the nickname for President Eisenhower. So that's where Ike comes from. But we're gonna keep going. This is sweet. Looks awesome with these cars and trucks right in front of me. But tunnel check-in, we are at 0.8 miles per kilowatt hour. It must have just dipped to that because it was 0.9 for pretty much all of that behind me. Behind me. And uh, it took exactly an hour to get to the tunnel. 47.4 miles and 57% state of charge now. It says I only have to charge to 55%, but I will probably charge to, I don't know, close to 80 um, just because this truck is such a flat curve, that's actually the best way to do it. So anyways, that's the tunnel check-in, going great. I am very comfortable. I can barely tell I have a car behind me, a trailer behind me, except I keep looking in my rear view mirror and seeing this, this Model 3 tailgating right on my ass. 
We have made it to the tunnel. Kyle's right there. We're in, we are entering. I have 52% state of charge left and 11.52 watt hour per mile. So not as efficient as, as, as I was hoping. I thought this thing could do 500 miles on a charge, but it's not doing that. Definitely not doing that. Um, but so far so good. We'll see how the downhill goes with how, if it overheats or something, we'll see. Alrighty, so Eisenhower Tunnel check-in from Andreas. Um, we're averaging 0 0.72 miles per kilowatt hour, which makes sense because we've been climbing, climbing. Uh, I think this is around 12,000 feet or 3,000 meters, I believe. Um, yeah, we have state of charge 52% or 90 miles left. And uh, my arrival estimate is now up to 50 miles, which is great. So I was just uh, on the call, on the phone with Kyle, and um, he was thinking I might be able to stretch it to even past Edwards. So maybe it will be Glenwood Springs. So now coming out of the tunnel and on the steep decline, this is gonna be an extreme regen test. All of our batteries are drained enough to the point where we can accept quite a bit of recuperation or regen into the battery pack, but a lot of electric trucks struggle with consistent regen. Cybertruck is one of them for sure. Rivian uh, really suffered early on, but has been getting better with tuning uh, over a few software updates, especially about six months or a year ago. They really focused on improving that. And a lot of it is a cell characterization issue rather than a thermal issue or an inverter issue or something like that. Each truck has their own limits, but sometimes it's just a specific battery cell and understanding how it operates in certain environments. I don't know what to expect from the Silverado, but I'm currently at 69%. I can feel us leveling off. We're about to go down. I'm going to turn one pedal driving from high to on because again, I want to eliminate as much brake blending as possible and just use as much regen as the truck will let me. And here we are coming out of the tunnel. It says icy road. Okay, well, we will take it extra careful then. Good to know. Uh, vehicles over 26,000 pounds, GVWR 35 max. We are not that heavy. You can see I've turned one pedal driving to on. We're at 69%. Let's see what we gain on the way down, but I'm already going into regen and I have, yeah, look at that. 145 kilowatts of regen available. That's great. Let's take it nice and easy. Let's see if I do get any more regen in high. Oh yeah, it's 193. Yeah, I'm gonna actually leave it in high. I wanna get as much regen as possible. I'm surprised it let me get that much. I've seen close to 400 kilowatt regen on this truck. Breaking out through the tunnel, look at those gorgeous views coming up to Silverthorne and Frisco. The view out of the tunnel is always so great. And I mean, this is a pretty cool view with the Silverado towing the Model 3. We are just taking it nice and easy down here. Hope nothing overheats. Otherwise, I'll have to use friction brakes. I mean, which isn't bad, but regen's always better. We get some more juice back in that battery. And with this much weight, it might actually bring some actual range back, which is pretty nice. Hopefully he's got his J-brake on in full send, but I'm gonna try and see if my regeneration will overheat at all, because I know some of the other trucks are prone to that. So we'll, we'll see. This is quite a long downhill. In fact, probably the longest downhill of this whole stretch. Yeah, wow, very impressed here with the Silverado. Feels very robust, and we are just at the beginning of this trip, but uh, call me impressed so far. Let's see if we have any limits by the time we hit the bottom of the hill. Since I'm leading the pack, I'm first to the bottom of the I-70 downhill after the Eisenhower Tunnel, and look at this. Still 190 kilowatts of regen. Certainly seems to be backing off. Doesn't want to get into the 200s right now, but it'll just sit there at 160, 170. And um, honestly, that's pretty dang good. So yes, definitely a regen limit, but if your regen limit is more regen than the Rivian could ever do, then I think we're doing just fine here in the Silverado. <laughs> so we made it down to the bottom of the hill and we're doing 861 watt hour per mile. Obviously that was all regen, so it's not really that accurate of what this trip is really gonna be like, but got some juice back in the battery. By the way, I recaptured so much energy. I'm up to 72% state of charge, which, you know, three or 4% in the Silverado is a lot more than three or 4% in the other trucks. So that is impressive, Chevy. I'm really surprised that it uh, regened for so long at such high levels. Damn, what a beast. 
Nice, so we made it down the hill. Now you can see Silverthorn in all of its glory. And we gained almost 5% state of charge, uh, which is like six or seven kilowatt hours just from coasting down that hill, or I guess regening down that hill. We're also up to 1.1 miles per kilowatt hour, which is pretty great. So, uh, yep, that's what hills do. It says I could do 104 miles from here. I'm uh, still not sure about that, but I think it's 43 miles to my charger and I can definitely do that. From what I can tell, the navigation on the Lightning actually won't take into account superchargers, not even the ones I have access to. So I will need to double check in the Tesla app, which I do have access to on this route. Uh, but if I can make it to Rifle, that'd be interesting. Although I don't really know if that would be necessary. I think I will just charge to 80% in, uh, in Edwards and just make it all the way there. We'll see. So, just talked to Kyle. Uh, he thinks I should push it to Glenwood and actually just jumped up to nine miles around. So I'll definitely do that. Uh, yep, so we'll be skipping Edwards. We are now cresting our second pass. This is Vale Pass and uh, plenty of power here in the electric trucks. 10,662 feet of elevation on that 0.9 miles per kilowatt hour. 62% well ahead of the other trucks regen a little bit can't go more than five over and uh, yeah wow beautiful views up here absolutely gorgeous this is a stunning day for a drive I can only imagine what people on I-70 must think seeing all these electric trucks <laughs> towing certainly their reactions are like what the heck and confused and interested and yeah it's interesting so now we're going downhill and look at those views holy moly uh bad news we're back to five miles arrival but uh it's okay i think we'll be gaining more going down this hill so let's see timing got me in traffic dang see you timing <laughs> nice and jordan's coming up as well in the lightning can see him in the mirror here man that thing looks good doesn't it love the lightning hell yeah Okay, bad news, we're down to two miles arrival. Um, I'm reconsidering, let's see. I'm still 23 minutes from Edwards, so I can still bail out there. Uh, keep an eye on it, I'll slow down a little bit and uh, then see, I still have 23 minutes to decide what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so this just in, I think the Team Lightning will continue stretching it beyond Edwards. The GPS still says to go to Edwards. Beautiful territory coming up to Vail, Colorado, but um, yeah, with all this downhill, my average is now 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour, and it's still saying I can only do 81 miles with this 50% state of charge, and that's, I guess, accurate because I just crossed, or I'm about to cross 80 miles total on the trip using about 50% state of charge, so... But that is a decent amount of climbing, so I think that's conservative. Uh, there's no way time it doesn't beat me because we're going to be stopping at basically all the same chargers. Our trucks have basically the same efficiency, almost the same state of charge. The only difference is that his truck charges faster. And so does Andreas's Rivian. I don't actually know where he's going to be charging. He's a little bit behind us. Welcome to Vail, Colorado. We are cruising and the other guys are just around the bend up there. I'm a little bit behind, but we're making moves. We're, I'm catching back up. Uh, in terms of our first stop, it looks like the truck still thinks we can make it to uh, Grand Junction over the entire Rocky Mountains with a trailer with still 24% remaining. And it's still indicating 186 miles of range. It's passing Vail here, uh, which looks like Austria, basically, if you've never been here. Uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, we are back up to nine miles arrival, which is good. I also just uh, had a call with Jordan. He is actually, so he is doing very well in the Lightning. Um, he's at 49% state of charge, and I was at uh, 39, um, so now I'm at 38. Okay, let's see what happens when I disobey orders and skip the Edwards exit. There's Edwards exit 163, and I'm skipping it. Will it recalculate and send me to Glenwood Springs, or will it be utterly dumb and tell me to turn around? It wants me to turn around. In six miles, it wants me to turn around. That makes no sense. 
we are passing the Edwards Charger. There's no turning back now. And I have 100 miles to do 45, 48 miles. Um, cruising, uh, it was set at 80. And it was getting there at 25%. Now it's down to 12. It just drops one more. So we'll see how long I can keep this up. Um, I'll probably slow it down once we get below 10%, which will probably be in the next five minutes. But I'm not going to go to Rifle. That's too far away. I'm going to go to Glenwood, charge there, hopefully not have to take the trailer off. And we should be good because I can charge faster than Jordan, which is my main goal here. So I will keep you guys updated. Andreas also has the... I guess if we're all going to Glenwood Springs, which I think we are, um, I wonder if he's going to Tesla or Electrify America. Because if we all show up to Tesla with trailers, as we saw at the beginning, uh, I guess we didn't film much of that, but it was a bit chaotic to try to get all the trucks plugged in with their trailers. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. The trailer is the biggest question mark with this whole thing. I mean, that's like making me question the range of the truck and also, even more scarily, the charger. Alright, here we go again. Is it going to make me exit? Well, obviously I'm not exiting, but what's it going to do? Is it going to reroute me to turn around again? Or will it actually recalculate chargers like it should? Uh, we'll find out. This is all fascinating stuff once it understands. Okay, yeah, it wants me to turn around in 10 miles. Good grief. That is just not the way to calculate road trips. So I found out how to replace the charger. It did let me find the Glenwood Springs one, and then it said it cannot add it to the route, and now it can't even calculate a route to Glenwood Springs, which by the way is like 30 miles away, and I have 65 miles of range left. So I don't understand the issues with this truck's navigation. I don't know why it's so bad. Another issue I have had is the kind of gasometer situation keeps changing. Right now it says I can only do 29 miles and subsequently won't let me navigate anywhere. On the other hand, I am insanely comfortable. The ride is incredible. The noise is actually really nice. There's very little road noise. Um, it seems like fairly sealed off from the environment. And I also can almost not tell I'm pulling a trailer like it's dialed in so incredibly well so there's a, a mixed bag with this truck a lot of amazing things and a lot of challenging things and it seems to be all in kind of a balance all right another chicken here I'm 32 miles from the Glenwood Electrify America uh, charger EA charger and uh, we are at 13 miles left so good to see. I slowed down a little bit. I was basically driving exactly the speed limit. Sorry for the camera work. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will should be able to make it there. We're averaging 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour, which is like high 700 watt hour per mile. I checked in with Timon. He's definitely more efficient than me, but um, I have like an EV9 long range or a Model S long range extra battery in my truck. <laughs> It's just not even fair. This is just crazy. So, yeah, I'm definitely making it to Grand Junction easy with 23%. We're in Glenwood Canyon. It says I'm going to get to uh, Glenwood Supercharger with 10%. And I don't think I'm going to stay there very long. It's only 120 kilowatts max. And that's not going to do me any good in this race, especially with Jordan right behind me. So, I think I'm going to charge there for like five minutes. Let me get up to like... I don't know, 15, 20%, and then jump straight to rifle. I think that will be my best bet because I rifle's a 250, so it would make it a lot easier than trying to stretch it there and go super slow, even though it's like only like 20 mile, 25 miles difference. But if I can get that extra couple percent, I should be good, and then hopefully have the trailer, um, the trailer charger open. Welcome to Glenwood Canyon. Beautiful, beautiful canyon winding down into Glenwood Springs, which is where we will all be charging except for Kyle. Hopefully Andreas is. Actually, I don't know where he's at. He's behind me somewhere, and last I checked in, he had like at least 10% less state of charge than I did, as does Timon. So I'm rocking out with 28% right now. 
and the truck still thinks I can only do 22 miles, which is just not accurate. So I'm just not trusting the truck. The sat nav still doesn't think I can get anywhere. So I'm just gonna enjoy the views, not really focus on anything else right now. This is so, so beautiful. I'm just glad we're hitting this before sunset because the way back through this canyon will be dark. See up there, Glenwood Springs was actually subject to a fire uh, a couple years back, which did a lot of damage. There's also been a history of rock slides, mud slides. This road here has been destroyed many times and it's, it's really not uncommon for it to happen. So you never know with the I-70 corridor. It's definitely chaos and scary sometimes. Uh, if you want to see any clips of that, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. People have definitely filmed the, the incidents or at least the aftermath. Uh, but yeah, a lot of fire damage is visible around here and some of those pieces of road are newer than others. But what a engineering feat it was to build this road. I mean, look at this, this tunnel here carving through the mountain instead of going around it for some reason. The rest of it's all kind of a bridge. So freaking cool. This just in, the satellite uh, navigation started working again, but now it doesn't know anything. It just says I'll arrive at Grand Junction with 0%. There's no charging stops, no analysis of anything. So yeah, just, just not, not great from that regard. But um, my own theory is that I will make it to Glenwood Springs just fine. We are about to exit. Um, I'm at 11%, says that I'm gonna get there with 10. We are officially enter entering Glenwood Springs. There goes Jordan. All right, bye, Timon. Good luck with your rear charge port. <laughs> According to PlugShare, it was marked as trailer friendly, but I don't even know what that means. So we'll find out soon enough. Um, but uh, yeah, because my charger is right over there, but to get over there, I have to go an extra mile down the highway. So it's, it's not the end of the world, but it is a solid like mile and a half off the highway, which is just slightly annoying. So it's interesting, the Rivian, I've noticed initially it uh, estimates very conservatively. Um, and then the arrival goes slowly up, which is, which I kind of like, yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, ideally it should be accurate from the beginning, right? But it also takes into account how, like, your driving style, right? Or weather changes. I'm not sure about, about that actually, but um, the weather changes. Yeah, so, um, uh, overall, I like the, uh, the estimation. Now we're actually at 18 miles arrival, which is good. We're here in Glenwood Springs, and guess what? I still have half of my battery remaining, indicating over 300 miles of towing range right now uh, on a full charge, 160 miles remaining. It's only 89 to Glen to uh, Grand Junction. Got no, not much uh, range anxiety here, showing a 22% arrival and 90 miles from now. <laughs> Crazy. 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, we've done 147 miles. So basically, right about 150 miles on this charge, and that was using 80% of the battery. So it's not quite two miles per percent, which is really impressive. Um, a lot of hill climb, but also a lot of hill descent. And what else? I mean, I wasn't ever conservative about my speed. I mean, I kept within the rules of the race, which was no more than five miles an hour over the speed limit, but I was pretty much always at that. I was never, you know, hypermiling it, never going slow just to conserve energy. So really not much of a concern. This has been better than I expected. Fortunately, I am in front of Andreas, which means uh, <laughs> if there's only one charger left, that's gonna suck for him, but we are just getting up to the charges here about two more minutes. So it is, yeah, a solid five, four or five minutes off the highway. That's like a almost 10 minute delay just accessing the charger, which is such a bummer. Tesla superchargers definitely have much better highway access. And it says chargers unreachable. So the car has no idea there's a charger here. These city buses are just blocking my race right here. They're costing me valuable time. Dude, let's go, let's go, let's go. Blocking my vibe. I got places to be. Oh boy, Timon is letting the Cybertruck down big time. Let me tell you why. He is pulling into Glenwood Springs, which there really needs to be a version three supercharger here, but it's an old 125 kilowatt unit, not even a 150. So he is going to probably have to unhook, get slow charging, 
and just have a terrible experience there. And it's really going to hamper the performance of the Cybertruck. We've had, I've been driving the Cybertruck a lot on these things. I've let Timon take it. He's not, of course, an EV road tripping expert, uh, but he's been on enough EV road trips to like know. So we can all give Timon crap in the comments for letting the Cybertruck down. I thought he was going to stretch it uh, past, but I don't think he, uh, he can make it to the next supercharger. Nearest charger is outside your range. Plan to find a power outlet where you can charge. This is just so bad. It knows I have 21%, which it should know is well over 16 miles of range. I just don't understand what the issue is. And it knows this is a charger. So yeah, if we go into this map here, will it say there's a charger here? Cannot calculate routes, where to? Let's just, just show me chargers nearby. How about that? Let's try America. Yep, it knows there's a charger here. Take me there. Go. Calculating. Unable to add chargers to this trip. Cannot calculate route because it can't. It doesn't think I can get right there. So I genuinely don't know. All right. What do we think? I am definitely kind of in the way, but I think I'm going to plug in because there is another entrance and exit. So sorry, Andreas. Let's see how well this works. Please work, plug and charge, please work. Okay. The only reason I'm okay with that is because that's like the weird back entrance that's not really even easily usable. So everyone, including that Volvo C40, will just come in that plainly obvious entrance right there. But um, charging is starting. So I don't think we'll actually need a ton to get to our destination. Um, welcome lightning driver. So plug and charge is working. That's how you know. And let's see, I hear contactors clicking. That's all good signs. Fast charging. There we go. It says 90% will be, what? 10.30 PM, 9.49, 8.40. Okay, it's just has no idea what it's doing. Let's actually see what route we're charging or what rate we're charging at here. Okay, 160, yep, entering full boost, so. Not bad. Let's see what the truck says it'll take now. Of course, the warnings block out everything. I don't like this software. Okay, now it's saying 6.30. So that's, yeah, only an hour charge to get to 90%, which I'm not gonna go to 90. Um, I'm gonna plan to go to 80, which let's actually see if I can set like a one-time limit to 80. So 80% will take only 30 minutes. And there is Andreas coming in with the Rivian. Oh man, what's he gonna do? I have kind of, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I think he's gonna have to un unhook. There's really only room for one person to do what I have done, which is of course not the nicest thing to do, but uh... <laughs> okay, it is each truck driver's call and he has decided he does not wanna unhook. So he is actually going to back out of here and try to come around that side and then swing around with me like in here and try not to block in the pole star, which should be fine. They should be able to pull it out as long as he's kind of taking this area. So just not the best charging of a structure. Sweet I-4 over there. They just pulled up and wanted to check out the trucks, but I'm already at 34%. So I am still cruising here, but I may be losing boost here. 169 kilowatts. That's pretty good, but um, not gonna hold this for too long. It is only 88 miles to Grand Junction from here, and most of that is downhill. So yeah, the range -o meter still has no idea. It says I can go 27 miles with 35%, which we know is not accurate. Um, so I guess I could charge to 80%, but I don't know. Alrighty, I am part of myself. I managed to back out of this parking lot here, and we have amazing help us here in the uh, BMW i4. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, who helped me back out here. And now I'm gonna try to pull it here from the other side. Cause I really don't wanna unhook. Okay, so let's see if you can squeeze in here. Holy moly. All right, Andres has made it. The pro truck driver is trying to get into the spot. <laughs> this is just hysterical. I mean, he can make it in the spot and I think they can get out just fine, actually. That's that's pretty good. Well done, sir. 
Thank you. <laughs> I just went to the bathroom and you can see I'm not blocking an entire charger because I had to unhook, which is a shame because I'm going to leave in like five, 10 minutes. So I have to rehook, but it didn't take too much time. Just put it there as close to the curb as I could. And we are about to see what the state of charge is. It only does a max of 120. So that's a real bummer, but if I can make it to rifle pretty quickly, I think this will still be in my benefit. Let's see, or 13%, which really sucks. How do I turn this off? Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, so it's negative four, 26 miles. Man, this is bad. So I've settled into my 120 kilowatt expected charging speed at 58%, just not great. Ugh, that's just like one of the big downsides of this car. Meanwhile, the Rivian over here is ripping at almost double, not quite, but uh, yeah, 214 kilowatts. So he would eventually catch up, but I do think I'll be able to unplug and jut over to Grand Junction faster than him. Okay, I changed chargers to a different one because that one's 1A that guy's connected to and I was at 1B and they split charging so now we should be able to uh ready to charge start charging what is it doing i'm moving chargers again because these are all so poorly labeled and i was still doing 50 kilowatts but everyone was talking to me i guess that's the big downside um i don't really know which charger to go to kind of blocking i just need like 10 percent. that's all i need and then i can go to rifle and then hopefully there's the pull through and i don't have to unhook again kyle was looking out let's do in checking the app and seeing man this is atrocious just wasted a bunch of time unfortunately but hopefully the fast charging and the rifle one they didn't have to unload, which was nice. They sent me a photo and hopefully putting it back on will be super easy. But I will be navigating to the Rivian Energy Network because it will start preconditioning. So whenever you navigate to a charger, right, the, um, the battery starts preconditioning. So to, to get it up to or down to, depending on the weather, the optimal temperature right um for fast charging uh but we still have 33 percent state of charge and we have crazy side winds i mean we're talking 35 mile an hour showing up as red on windy something like that just side winds we gotta be really careful with stability uh, but again i still have plenty of range to make it 19 percent now the wind is ramping up which is killing our range so my silverado plan is um we're gonna go to grand junction charge up at electrify america there probably up to 90 percent um, and then go because one of the problems with having this rear charging port is I'm gonna have to unhook at stations and even at 80 85 percent I'm charging faster than the lightning uh, can normally you know lightning gets the boost but it's normally at about 120 kilowatts and here um, yeah I'm, I'm doing 120 kilowatts well above 80 percent so yeah, I'm just gonna charge up deep and then do one charging stop to do this whole thing. Plus, I think it's a neat story and it'll just save me a lot of hassle. Uh, I kind of wish I took the Cybertruck at this point because I would have known not to go to the Glenwood uh, Springs Supercharger, but time had said he couldn't make it any farther. I don't know. I think he could have slowed down in advance to stretch it, but these are all the things, right? We always look back and say, oh, we should have done it one way or another. But ultimately, I really wanted to drive this truck because I've had a lot of experience towing with the other vehicles at this point, and it's my first time towing with the Silverado, and uh, from a you know learning experience, I'm learning so much, uh, and uh, how useful it is to have such a big battery. So anyway, just cruising, enjoying it. So I charged up to 24%. Now the hassle is getting this damn trailer lined up, and just hoping that the rifle one is open. Let's hope that's lined up. Oh, we should be good. Please. 
Okay, so while we're waiting, because we have to wait because my charging speeds are slow, yours are ripping over there. How yeah. is the drive? The drive is very good. Uh, so I picked, the, uh, picked up the Rivian last night and drove it one hour home, and I was already, I was a little bit worried because it's, you know, it's a new car, a new trailer, uh, or a different car. Um, and I haven't really towed that much in the past few years, so I was a little bit concerned, but Rivian makes it so easy. It's such a breeze. I'm really, like, yeah, it just yeah. does everything so well. Yeah. And, and honestly, this Lightning does a lot well, just not the software. The ride is amazing. It's yeah. super quiet. Yeah. I can't even tell it's a trailer back there. Yeah. So it's, yeah, but you definitely have a leg up in the software department. Uh -huh. So does Timon. I haven't done much with the Silverado software, but yeah. that truck just yeah. has such a beastly range and charging. Yeah. So that makes up for it. Silverado is the beast, yeah. My issue is this Lightning doesn't have great charging. Right, yeah. Okay range, but not class leading in any way but yeah i'm getting there i think at 75 percent, i'm gonna ditch okay and then uh figure out how to back out of this place if you can get out of here let me know if you need help backing up okay I'm pro when it comes to this problem you <laughs> are yeah i can tell yeah i saw you back early up earlier <laughs> and we are back on the road after some few headaches but 23 percent to do 26 miles it says arrival state is six percent we'll see about that um, I just hope this goes smoothly and yeah, everyone's just looking at me. I'm just trying to navigate a boat with a boat on the back. Too bad it's not an actual charger because then it would be an actual boat, but we will see how it goes. I really hope I make it. Otherwise I'm definitely out of the race. All right. I'm calling it 75% state of charge. We're going to see if we can boogie out of here. There's the session summary for you. 75 kilowatt hours delivered. Of course, I have to close my own charging port. And I am heading off. Ryan, I'll be very careful with your car, I promise. Oh, that's so good. Light bar. The blue Model 3 in the back. Yep, it's good. Okay, now he's driving over the curb. <laughs> yeah, give it a little juice. Good. Nice. Yeah, all good. Yeah, nice. Look at that. That is some clearance. Oh yeah. I did it. Okay, <laughs> see you on the other side. See you later. All right, I am off. Um, it's, I have no idea where this truck is getting this calculation from because we just drove 150 miles and used 80% of the battery. So nowhere in that mass should dictate 75% going 64 miles of range. If I try to navigate to Grand Junction, it will just say route failed. So. I don't really know, but I am jet setting over there, or I guess truck setting. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna beat Andreas for sure. He's gonna charge there for a bit longer. And poor Timon uh, just had a rough go at a V2 supercharger. So he's gonna stop and rifle, which means he has leapfrogged me for now, but I am also going to pass him, I think. Well, it's just started preconditioning for us uh, about uh, tw 31 minutes or 29 miles away from the charging station. You get a little chime when the Silverado preconditioning goes, but it ding it says we're getting ready for fast charging. And I have to say there is a manual preconditioning option in the Silverados. I find much better charging speed success when I let it choose to precondition to the temperature it wants using the route planner. This is much better than manual preconditioning. Uh, sometimes I don't get full speed manual, but I do with using the nav system for it. Anyway, cruising through the uh, one last canyon before we make our final uh, descent into Grand Junction. Huge winds out here, absolutely crazy. And um, yeah, not looking good. One thing to consider is I've just pulled up the Electrify America app ahead of our arrival. And even though there is a great Rivian Adventure Network site already in Grand Junction, it's currently at the time of this recording closed to other vehicles than Rivians. And so to me, that's a little bit uh, annoying because Tesla's opened up, everyone's opening up to everyone and Rivian is the last one to open up their network. But they claim they'll do it by the end of the year. It's 2024, they got a few more months left, you know, it's seven, eight months left to do it, something like that. Um, the EA site that we're going to, unfortunately, only has one 350 kilowatt port uh, there at the site. There are uh, the one, there's two 350 kilowatt stations. One of them is derated to 50 on the app. Although sometimes I find them still able to output full power. We've always known Grand Junction is a buggy site. It's an old ABB site. 
but uh, if, if there's a car on that 350 port, we're gonna try the 350 kilowatt that claims limited to 50 because, hey, that's uh, I've had it work at full power before and it was just limited for no reason. And then there's, um, I think, one or two uh, 150 kilowatt ports available. So as far as I know, every station is up and running. I think we'll look when we get there, but uh, only one possibility. There are some cables that are down, so not every dispenser is operating at its full potential. And I don't know, it's gonna be a little bit of an adventure, but you guys and I have done this many times. We're gonna find the one that gives us the most amount of power. Yeah, gotta catch up to Jordan. So let's go here. Da -da -da. 180 miles, perfect. Uh, stop charging. Let's go. Then this, perfect. Okay, thank you. 8 kilowatt hours for forty-five dollars. Really pricey, actually. All right, by Glenwood Springs, off to Grand Junction. Okay, so we made it out of the uh, the parking lot there with the chargers, the plaza. Very nice there, and uh, we have ninety miles to go. One hour, eighteen minutes, around fourteen miles. Should be fine. And we are off the highway again. We are in Rifle now and pulling up to the supercharger. I'm seriously hoping that the pull through is open. I think there's a pull through. From the photos I saw, there was a pull through. If not, there's 10 stalls and there's only two people on the way. So I can see the charger. Yeah, there's no pull through, uh, but there is that one, which I just really don't want to block the sonic exit, so we will see how to do this. All right, so I just passed Rifle, which means I just passed Timon, who is probably plugging in this truck to a 250 kilowatt V3 supercharger, which will probably do even more than 250 actually, depending on what he plugs in. So uh, yeah, but I'm officially in second place now, finally feels good in the Ford because we haven't had many victories in the Ford lately, but yeah, I'm loving this. Feels comfortable. Got my cooled seat on, uh, 60 degrees outside, really quite nice. And uh, yeah, getting some weather up on the uh, plateau, but it looks like clear roads ahead. So I should be arriving at Grand Junction. I think I'll be charging at EA. Kyle will charge at EA. Rivian, charger for Andreas, Tesla supercharger for Timon. But I think I might jut over from EA to supercharger just to see. I have a friend meeting me. He's going to drive me over there while this truck's charging because this truck will just sit and charge for a while. Okay, we got here only blocking two chargers using three, but there are blocking five chargers. Whoops. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six other chargers available. And I hope this Model 3 leaves before I do. Otherwise, it might get a little tricky getting out. But we are cooking. Didn't have to unload, which is super nice. And we're already doing 230 kilowatts, which is super great. Um, let's see, now I need to go to the Grand Junction supercharger. Junction is only 53 miles. Um, 65 miles. So I shouldn't be here too long, as long as it keeps up the speeds, which is super nice um and hopefully no one yells at me that would also be great but i know jordan's already passed me and andres is probably going to pass me soon it looks like my screw up at glenwood springs really cost me on this one hopefully i can uh, make some time back on the way home as this charge is fa faster than the lightning and i'll probably i really don't know if i'm going to full charge and grand junction it's basically all uphill on the way back, which kind of sucks, but we shall see. We have made it to Grand Junction in the Silverado and I'm pulling off. We've averaged 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour. This is the first time I'm exiting the highway here and I'm using a lot of regen, 230 kilowatts regen. Uh, we're still four miles from the charger. That is one of the problems with this location and why uh, the Tesla supercharger network opening up to GM very soon, it sounds like, and Rivian and Ford and Tesla now, of course, is uh, those chargers are much closer in other areas. Uh, for example, you have Parachute right on the other side of this that you can then skip to Green River. But um, still, the, all of the, the Rivian Adventure Network, the Tesla supercharger, 
supercharger and the EA station are all pretty far off the highway here. And to make it a bit more fair of a comparison, uh, Andreas said we all have to get a picture in front of that Starbucks, which is actually close to the charging station I'm going to use. There is a DC charger right over here. It's a 62 kilowatt charge point unit. Of course, we're not going to use that. We need to get some more power than 62 kilowatts. So it's worth the 3.7 mile detour to try and get 350 kilowatts or even some more into this thing because this could take all of it and it holds it for quite some time. So let's go blast over to the EA station. I'll see you there in about eight minutes. It's pretty far off the highway and hopefully the 350 kilowatt spot is open. Keep your fingers and toes crossed. crazy here and there is an ionic 5. Oh no and i think they're just plugging into station three. Oh, i gotta see if i can pay that guy to move give him 100 bucks and hey dude can you take slower charging just started preconditioning again um i gotta drop the trailer so i'm gonna do that and then we're gonna plug in yeah it looks like he's just initiating all right i really need to use that station sorry dude let's drop the trailer right here as quick as we can I knew this was going to happen, but all right, here we are somewhat in the spot. Let's go, go, go. Time to unhook. What is our stats? 230 miles, 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour, I think. Okay, let's do this fast. I wish I had my drill that time and had here, but we're going to go. Wham! Let's go. Come on. Okay, as quickly as I can, I've unhooked. Let's go. The only way I really know to bring up the Rear cameras to go reverse and then forwards, and then we can keep an eye on if we leave anything behind. Nope, we're good. Okay, let's go. I'm trying to plug this thing in. Nobody's gonna see a Silverado autocross through a parking lot like this before. <laughs> yeah, baby, we have an open station. No way. <laughs> okay, this is the one that's working. Okay, I've tapped. I'm on the 350 kilowatt. It says it's available. HVAC is off, has to be off in Silverados. Otherwise they get very weird wonky charging. Contactors just clicked, initiating charging. This is a dream. <laughs> yes, holy smokes. The guys with the superchargers where they can stop and rifle or parachute and get literally 15, 20 stalls. I got four <laughs> and some of them aren't even working. So here we go, 42 cents a kilowatt hour. That's going to be expensive. I mean, no matter what it is, Jordan's calling me right now. Uh, let's just make sure we're charging and then I can answer. Got to get the juice in this thing. Come on, get off this screen. There we go. 154 kilowatts. What the heck? Oh, I don't know what that speed is. Never seen that. 230. Okay, good. 267. We're talking 350. There we go, baby. I like it. 346. 45 oh hell yes drinking the juice over 340 kilowatts going into this thing that is what i'm talking about that silverado ev lifestyle baby we've already put in three kilowatt hours <laughs> it's not even been one minute just sitting pegged all right i'm gonna monitor the charging we have now reached 30 percent state of charge so we've gained 16 percent in six minutes and again that's 37 kilowatt hours and it's still just sitting 344 kilowatts now i guess what's really shouldn't be impressive to me but it still is is this a huge battery it's 240 kilowatt hour gross plus or minus and 215 plus or minus usable so like that's not that fast on the c rate but it still has to deal with the thermals of the, <laughs> that much energy going through this cabling. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit higher voltage than most cars, but it's not exactly, it gets close to 800 volts when full, but when we plug in dead, it's not quite 800 volts. So it's just pulling a lot of current still, the cable's still ripping, but I guess it's no different than like a 400 volt car sitting at 500 amps, but still I'm just loving this <laughs> pegged at over 340 kilowatts i can monitor it in my ea app even though i don't have the app for the silverado so i can keep an eye on charging and uh yeah let's go go for a trek get some walking in that was quite the distance and we're halfway through the challenge officially we have to go by the starbucks and then we can go back to denver we are leaving the supercharger now 
Uh, talked to some great people, super interested. There are a couple of dudes that are interested in the Model 3 wheels too, the Martians. And everyone seems super stoked about this thing, but we are at 60 some percent. Uh, why does it? 62 percent. And I'm causing traffic by myself, but that's okay. I drive a cyber truck. But 62% says 188 miles. We'll see about that. It says I'll arrive with 14%, which should be good. The only downside is it's 120 kilowatts. Here we are along the Colorado River. I love this canyon too. So many nice canyons on the route to Grand Junction. If anyone has not done this drive, I highly recommend it. We are showing a mere glimpse through these videos. Um, and going from Denver to Grand Junction, even in an EV, super easy. Uh, zero reason not to do it. Plenty of charging along the way, and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful drive. Andreas checking in from the Rivian. Um, okay, so I keep my arrival keeps dropping, and uh, I think it's because of the winds. Uh, and high, speeds are also very high here, like 75. Um, but you also have a 20 mile hour headwind, which is uh, not insignificant, right? So it being only 120 kilowatts is really gonna ruin me, I think, even more than I already have ruined this race for myself. But um, I'm probably gonna stop and parachute on the way back. I'm gonna charge enough to make it to parachute, it's all uphill, then probably charge in Edwards. I think I'm gonna jump charger to charger next. I think that's better for me to hopefully get some space, close the distance or some more space in between us uh, if I am in the lead. But I'm just gonna cruise down probably 65 miles an hour just to make sure I have enough charge. But everything's looking all right. Uh, the only bad thing is we have a headwind. The headwind, I think, is going to be more detrimental than anything else. Um, I'm already at 13% arrival, so it's just going to keep going down. Right now, I have a 50-mile arrival estimate at the Rivian Adventure Network in uh, Brain Junction. So, I'm definitely going to charge there. Problem is, I cannot do the same trip I did out here in reverse, right? Because we left Lakewood with 100%. So I would have to charge again in Glenwood Springs to 100% in order to make it home, which is not a good idea because it would take forever, right? So I would charge up in Grand Junction, then maybe a little bit in Glenwood Springs again, and then do another charger hop in between. I'm not sure which one they will be yet. But I have to look on the map. And I heard we're getting Chick-fil-A delivered to the charger thanks to uh, one of Jordan's friends. Epic. Thanks man, a lot. Appreciate it. <laughs> I'm heading back to Sam's Club because Chick-fil-A had uh, the longest line in the world. So I just peed and then heading back to the truck. Definitely a lot of wind in this canyon here. But oh my gosh, it's stunning. And uh, that canyon cut off my sunshine view. But I think we're about to see some more. So should still see a sunset but judging by the timing i'll be seeing sunset over sam's club which is just so romantic <laughs> so i just got the driving range low indicator um i have done 60 miles and it's basically gone down 20 miles on that like i left with 48 miles assumed range and now it's saying 25 so it's basically just not learning anything um, it still doesn't think I can make it to the charger, which is only 15 miles away. So I don't know. I've just given up listening to the truck at all. Um, really just trying to not get too blinded by the sunshine, but, uh, beautiful, beautiful area. Grand Junction is phenomenal. We're just passing through Palisade, which is actually Colorado's wine country. Not everyone knows about that, but a lot of beautiful vineyards on kind of a, a river situation over there. It, this is, this is wine country. So worth a visit once again if you're ever curious but um that's not why i'm here sadly okay here we are walking back up to the truck man it takes a while to walk places but uh yeah went over that was not bad we're already at 59 percent 
in 20 minutes, still doing 250 kilowatts. I've been monitoring the charge for my app. It held 300 kilowatts to 50 something percent and 108 kilowatt hours delivered. So that is almost as much as a full Cybertruck battery at 123 kilowatt hours. And I've just put that in in 20 minutes. <laughs> wow, okay, so we're gonna need a pretty deep charge here. I don't think it's worth, honestly, we're still charging faster than the Rivian. We're charging definitely faster than the Lightning and the Cybertruck can charge at 250 kilowatts but only from zero to 29% on the current software. Hopefully they improve that. So I'm still charging just as fast, if not faster than pretty much all the trucks out there. And I'm, and I'm at 61%. So I think the best and the safest bet is to just do a deep singular charge here and then just cruise back to Denver and try and arrange for a low state of charge arrival. But it wouldn't be possible because I'll regen on the way down in. So I just need to crest the Eisenhower tunnel. Once I crest that, then we're good to go. So we are ripping now, tapering 200 kilowatts. Um, there's our stats to get here, 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour, 232 miles, HVAC off. Two things you need in every Silverado. Turn HVAC off, 10 millimeter, just in case you have to recycle a 12 volt. <laughs> I've had to do it like three times this week. Not necessarily on this truck. This truck seems to be a bit more stable, but I had a rental truck that was on earlier software and that was pretty brutal. Although I have had some weird charge bug stuff. It just seems to be very temperamental about the chargers that you plug in. This cable is hot. Okay, but I don't think we're tapering due to cable temperature. I haven't charged this thing yet or done any charge recordings, but I'm guessing this feels about right for the charging performance. Either way, it's still freaking rocks. Thing just sent it the whole way up here. So yeah, we'll just let it go. The AC compressor's ripping on this thing. It's so huge, you need the wide view just to get it in frame. Ideally, we should hit a lot of charges with a low state of charge, charge up for like five, 10 minutes and go to the next one. Now back to my strategy. I think I'll only charge up a little bit in the brain junction, uh, just so I can make it back to parachute, parachute or rifle, not sure yet, which, has, uh, which have a V3 supercharger, Tesla. Charge there a little higher maybe. Then I can skip Grand Chung, uh, Glenwood Springs, uh, which is also good because it's a very yeah, it's it's very far off the highway. So even just now, it took me like five minutes to get there, right? So yeah, and then so I would skip Glenwood Springs, go to Edwards, do a deep charge there maybe, and then head all the way back to Lakewood. Well, pretty cool. This dude in the Silver Silverado over here is a big Silverado EV fan. And then a guy who works here at Sam's Club came over and was like, nice truck. It's the first time in two weeks anyone's ever come up to us to talk to us about our Silverado EV we've been testing uh, because everyone just wants to see the Cyber truck. And I'm like, no, this is the one. <laughs> this is the most useful truck. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Um, Yep, so cool. Two, in one stop, Grand Junction. Grand Junction or Silverado EV fans. We're in Silverado country, hell yeah. He said he's got the exhaust mod on his Silverado. It's got the rust mod. Half of it fell off. He said it sounds awesome. He's leaving it. I was like, hell yeah. But look at that, still 170 kilowatts, 168 kilowatts. Let's see what happens when we plug in where we need to go back to the Lakewood Electrify America station, which is this right here. Shows a 9% arrival, which hmm, I have a hard time believing that. You know, this thing cut down quite a bit on the end coming over this way. We will have a bit of a tailwind, I guess. And all that headwind coming in will help us on the return. But uh, we're still charging fast, 182 kilowatts, which is faster than the Lightning could ever charge, really. And it's actually increasing. So I bet the truck's cooling down from a thermal standpoint and starting to allow more charging. I wish that... You know, like Ford, when you option the max tow package, gives you a dual compressor. I think this truck's pretty thermally limited during charging. I wish it would give us a little bit more cooling because the compressor is just pegged. But look at this thing, 30 minutes, we've put in 137.8 kilowatt hours, still doing 190 kilowatts. <laughs> what a beast. Yeah, I say I charge it up to at least 80%, probably 90, and then we'll go. Made it, just exited, and we are now in Grand Junction and finding the charger. Got off the highway with 23%, so I really could have ducked out sooner. I could have left at like 60% and still would have been fine. But hey, a little bit of buffer 
doesn't hurt anyone, especially with a truck with this flat of a charging curve. It's kind of like nears makes no difference, which does take the stress out of your charging on your road trips. Uh, the range is still not corrected itself, but um, that's fine. Got three and a half miles to the charger and yeah, caught it just before sunset, which is just what I had hoped for. Oh my God, that old Suburban looks like it's been to World War One and back. <laughs> what the heck? That's awesome. I'm a huge Suburban fan, if you guys don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway, always always grew up with them, basically. So I, maybe there's a soft spot in my heart for, for good old Chevy. But I, I got to tell you, big batteries, fast charging. I, I'm just so thrilled that I took this truck because not, yes, I know I'm going to win, but also I'm so thrilled because I'm truly learning what it's like to have big ass batteries. Not only is the truck from World War One, I, I think that dude is too, getting out of it. Holy smokes. Anyway, uh, we went from 9% to 5%, so I'm not trusting this unit here. Uh, and it's still indicating 215 miles of range at 76%. If I turn off tow mode, it's going to shoot up pretty high. I'm not sure what it'll go to, but um, yep. I'll hit Starbucks on the way out. Maybe I'll even mobile order and get a little thing. I'm trying to take a break from the pink drink. I haven't committed to it yet. It's not that healthy, so I might just get a coffee. Yeah, wow, ripping over. Look at that. That's what this thing will do without a trailer. I bet on this route you could get 450, 500 miles out of this thing uh, just driving normally over the Rockies. It's crazy. Back to tow mode. All right, photo location made to the Starbucks. For a split second, I am ahead in this race because Kyle went to go charge at Electrify America first and I came to get the photo first. So here we go, proof that I made it. Got my photo in first. I can celebrate a little, little fleeting victory. So here is where we need to make our determination. Do we sit here charging at 100 kilowatts at 82% with this one indicating, uh, I don't know, 15% arrival or do we trust the guesso meter here and we have to understand we're a thousand feet below where we're going to end up right now i think what we should do is first of all lights off let's not burn any extra juice here we're here to win um always about the optimization let's yeah i still think we got to charge up deeper even though we're doing 100 kilowatts it's not great but i think it's quicker to sit here and deep charge plus it's kind of a cool story that we only did one charge it's not out of spec way but there's no really trailer friendly locations anywhere in colorado with a rear charge port between here and where we have to end up that work with this truck again if there was a supercharger maybe we could find one that's a pull through i think there's one in rifle Tynan was saying. I haven't seen it yet, but um, no, we we should not unhook again. We should unhook once. We should go to Lakewood. So let's charge it to 90% or so. And maybe uh, Jordan will be here with the lightning. I'm not sure. My friend Mike should be here shortly. And that means I will get some food. I think he got some food for Andreas as well. So we're going to pull in over here. Looks like Kyle even disconnected the trailer. I'm guessing I might have to do that as well, but we shall see. Maybe I'll get lucky. He has a different charging port situation, so. Jordan is arriving to the supercharger with the Model 3 on the back. Let's hope he doesn't run into anyone. So glad that he is here. Welcome, I was gonna have you come around the backside, but this works perfectly. All right, throw it in park, let's get it juicing. Shut her off. <laughs> here we go. I think both of these are working. Good. How's your drive going? So far, great. Super comfortable. Yeah, the lightning rocks, dude. Yeah. All right, so yeah, connecting. Yeah, cable cooling's on, processing payment. Hell yeah. So easy. Welcome to Grand Junction. I'm just about to leave. Okay. I'm at like 80 something. I'm gonna charge up deep. Nice knowing you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna try and make it back on one charge. Yeah, well, I made it here with 14%, but we are, we're a thousand feet lower than where we'll end up. Yeah. And we have that big climb at the end, yeah. which could really throw off BMS stuff. And we started at 100. We started at 100. Which would take you a while to get to. Right, so. Interesting. I'm going to just take it easy and try and stretch it back. Okay. As long as I get out of here first, I can yeah. start blocking anyone coming up. Tailwind, right? I think we'll have some tailwind okay. on the way out. Let's make sure you're charging quick. Welcome, F-150 Lightning driver. By the way, still no way to hook up Pass Plus with F-150 plug and charge. <laughs> Come on, Ford. There we are, 120 kilowatts, but shouldn't you be doing more? Oh, like, takes no, no, no. It's a 350 amp limited charger. Because no boost. No boost, you're just at your nominal rating. 
<laughs> that's because that's the other 350 and I'm using the other one and I'm not unplugging for you. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost ready to go, but it's honestly not worth it to unhitch and deal with all that crap. Yeah. yeah. This is great. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a turbo in CV Auto. Oh, oh, very nice. Kind of like yours, but yeah. that's your buddy. That will be mine. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Andreas refused to unhitch. It's not the last one. So <laughs> really a lot of like, <laughs> <laughs> I think he doesn't really know how to hitch. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. He's great at backing up the trailer. Though. Really? Okay. He, he did like all these zigzagging things. And you know, he calculated it all and planned it, yeah, planned yeah. every move ahead of time. In his head, the drone, the German drone shot. Just <laughs> <laughs> go on a go. No time. <laughs> Good. So here are the Tesla charges, and uh, we want to go to the uh, Rivian. So good thing is we can just nose in. Makes it so much easier than before. Alrighty, no time to waste. No time to waste. We gotta do this. Yep, such a nice fat. And put this in. Okay, one-handed. Uh, so we put a camera. Okay, let's see. Okay, charging. Oh yeah, charging, ramping up. Perfect, 13. Great, 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 great. Nice. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the rifle supercharger. It's a 12 stall, 250 kilowatt V3 Tesla supercharger. Uh, charge up there with the amazing adapter. And um, it's 65 miles, but now we have a uh, tailwind. So we had a, a 20 mile power headwind out here. Now we're going the opposite way, which means it will turn into a tailwind, which gives us much better efficiency, which is good. Um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna go there. And uh, let's see, so I'm at 15% right now. Charging with around 20 kilowatts, which is good. And um, yeah, so probably gonna go there. Then Edwards, which is, I believe, here. And I think now one of Jordan's friends is supposed to show up uh, from Flying Miata and get me some Chick fil A. And we have to take the Starbucks photo. I cannot forget about that. <laughs> All right, so plugged in. We are just limited. We're at the peak because this only does 350 amps, these 150 kilowatt chargers. So that's all I can do in this bad boy. Um, that thing finally has tapered below this. It takes a lot for it to taper that low. <laughs> but at what point do you taper below 120 kilowatts? Uh, 81%, same as you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get there very differently. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've delivered 180 something kilowatt hours. That's that's bigger than like every other battery out there. You would just be ex like you would be a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> this thing would just try to put that much in there. Yep. <laughs> oh. But uh, Andreas just got over to Rivian. Timon's 10 minutes away. Oh, so I'm gonna stop and have a coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you're gonna beat us all back by a, a decent amount, yeah, I think. I, I guess I'll do a charging test by the time I get back. Yeah. I, I still have to test the truck, so I'll, I'll start testing while I'm waiting. Yeah, you can probably finish that before Timon gets there. Right, exactly. I'll just go to bed, see Timon in the morning. I'll yeah. <laughs> But great, yeah, so, uh, I mean, unfortunately, the 350s are taken by the two vehicles that actually can use really them. Do yeah. them. I probably could move here and you could move there, but then you'd have to unhook it. be. I honestly don't know if the Lightning would give you the boost after 10 minutes of nominal power. I think it would. Yeah. But not worth trying out right now when we have to unhook. No, it's an experience for another day. This is honestly, this is the real world experience that you would have. Yep. Everything you've done is like fully optimized for this thing. Yep. Uh, interestingly, superchargers on the way back, because you probably are going to hit parachute. Uh, I think uh, rifle, rifle, and okay. then uh, Edwards. Edward. Well, Edwards, you may want to use EA though. Yeah, I don't know, rifle and then something. Oh, so let's check the efficiency. So we are now 237 miles in to the trip, 1.29 miles per kilowatt hour. Jordan, I am pretty much charged up with plenty of buffer. The truck says I can get back at 30%, which Jeez. it said getting here, but I got here at 14. Yeah, we so know that's not true. Trust it. <laughs> uh, the cyber truck though, really accurate. Yeah. At least in my one test. I don't know if time is I think it's experience. fairly, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm at 92%, took 56 minutes. So I'm about to do <laughs> over or just about 500 miles of driving with less than an hour of charging. That's pretty um, good. While towing. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, we've delivered 183 kilowatt hours to the truck. 
It was seventy six dollars with the membership pricing, which Holy is just crazy. Cow. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm gonna go hook up the trailer, and then we'll be ready to rip. I'm at fifty five kilowatts, which is like a Bolt lifestyle. Yeah. So now I'm that you're at ninety three percent, at ninety three percent. Well, if you were a Bolt, you'd be waiting till hundred to unplug. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I am on the three fifty. Yeah. So Jordan, you should move your truck forward there. Right. I'm gonna unplug this and get it hooked up to the trailer. All right. You're gonna be blocking one, but someone can come from behind. That's true. Yeah. Back. Uh, how much did this cost? Hundred and eighty five point five kilowatt hours. Eighty five bucks to charge. Whoa! This is a hundred dollar truck to go zero to full with membership pricing. Okay, we gotta go hook this thing up. Go, 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 go. Jordan's already actually made it to the halfway point before me. So, okay. Time to go hook this thing up to my trailer. Let's go hard right, hard right, hard right, and perfect. A little forwards. We can just push it over a little bit. Let's knock it over. Close. All right, we should have plug-in charge capability. I don't know why I closed the charge port. I could have just left that open, but okay. We'll see if it's worth restarting the session for that. We might get the boost. Kyle's looking up the charger or the trailer right now. Let's see what happens. The wind's picking up. Yeah, I had some nasty headwind on the way out here. Springtime. Springtime. Connecting, connecting. Someday this is gonna be lightning fast. Until then, this is lightning fast though. <laughs> All right, it's, it's, it's warming up. Cable cooling has started. Cable cooling's ramping up. Authorized, but well, it took like a whole minute. I bet that wasn't worth the marginal charging speed improvement I might, might get from this. But I think I will charge fairly deeply so I can get as far away as possible. 165 kilowatts. It did. It worked. We got the boost by switching chargers. That's awesome. Okay, we're all hooked up. Best way to test it. Full brakes, full throttle, full brakes. We're good. Let's roll. 236 miles back to Denver. I got to stop at the Starbucks over here, get the photo. And then we can go. <laughs> I'm out of breath. It took me like three times to get that trailer hitch. I was on it every time, but I just needed to move an inch. The U-Haul uh, ones are pretty unforgiving. My trailer is great. I can just get it within a ballpark and just nudge it in. So anyway, Jordan's charging the lightning over there. He moved it to the 350. If someone really needs it, they can come around the backside. There it is. Starbucks coffee. I'll snag the photo. I want to just double check the Model 3 strapped down. I meant to do that before we left. I mean, it is strapped down. Just want to tighten everything before we go over the Rockies again. And then we can go, go, go. So let's pull in, get the photo. Okay, there's the photo at the Starbucks. Let's go. <laughs> tighten down the three. Nice. 94%. It's indicating 262 miles. How long till we get there? 237. That math works for me. There's Tymon pulling in at a side of truck. All righty, so. I'm definitely in dead last. <laughs> Glenwood Springs really screwed me over. I heard, yeah. Um, I'm about to head out. Uh, Kyle was saying we should retighten the Model 3s. I did that the last did it. Okay. I'll check it again. Was it bad for you? I figured since we're here, we may as well pop in to say hey to the guys. And uh, there's Jordan in the Miata. How did I beat them there? I already got the photo. So let's just say hi to everyone. Sorry to cut everyone off, but I don't got time to wait for the four-way stop. We are here to win a race in the Silverado, but we're getting a little cocky. We're just coming by to check on everyone, make sure everyone's okay and safe and happy and healthy. So let's just say hello. Came just to say hi. Hello. Okay, see you back in Denver. <laughs> Truck's now projecting 27% arrival, so we've already lost quite a bit. So I'm just gonna take it easy. I don't wanna stop to charge. I don't wanna unhook, and then we'll be good to go. No merging area, that's safe, but we're good. We've also got a 8,000 pound Silverado with a big ass trailer. I think we wouldn't be the ones with the problem. If we just pulled out, we'd be just fine. All right, onto the highway we go. All right, thank you, Mike, was the name you said? That's right, Mike, yeah. okay. Thanks for the Chick-fil-A. Oh, you're welcome. I grab it. Alrighty. So windy. Holy crap. Alrighty, 18 miles. Damn it, I overcharged a little bit. Uh, okay, let's unplug. I should have hit the stop charge at the ring first. We I'm have so stretched fun. this as far as you could see it stretched on a lightning. Oh my gosh, Andreas is down there and he's unplugging. 
Oh my gosh! <laughs> I only hear it. That would really screw me over. Yeah. Well, uh, I think Rivian might beat me. We'll see. I don't know. My my truck's almost done. I think so. Yeah, I'm dead last. You have to wait for me anyway to drive you home. So yeah, <laughs> it sucks for you. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm heading over to Starbucks to take the uh, the proof. <laughs> Well, now that the weather is, well, it's warm here, but it's certainly gonna be cold up in the mountains. But I'll tell you one thing, both the Silverado and the Cybertruck will have a huge advantage. Um, we both have heat pumps with heat scavenging. I bet a lot of you didn't even know the Silverado had a heat pump. It does, and it's actually a pretty good thermal system, believe it or not, it's pretty sophisticated. So uh, similar to Tesla, it's got many valves. I don't know how many, maybe it's eight, probably not, but it's got a lot, Could literally no idea, but it does have heat scavenging and it does have a heat pump. And, uh, you know, that's about the only thing efficiency related on this truck that I can say. Everything else is just big batteries and send it. So, uh, yeah, the Cybertruck has great thermal management with heat pump. And the F-150 Lightning is a model year 2023 without the heat pump. And the Rivian is a model year 2022 without the heat pump. And both the Rivian and the Lightning should be getting refreshes very soon with heat pumps is my guess. I mean, I know for sure the Lightning will. I think the Rivian will. It's not been confirmed, but we can assume. So anyway, it's 70 miles an hour. Let's just get it up to 75 and set the cruise and I'll see y'all back in Denver. Let's just cruise on back. So I'm doing 112 kilowatts, which is better than 50, which I first plugged into. Hopefully it looks like that model, model Y just showed up and it looks like it's on a separate one, which is super nice. So I'll be here for like 20 minutes and then I'm leaving. All right, here's the proof. A Starbucks photo taken and back onto the highway. Yep, love this place, but time to go back. Gotta fly out tomorrow morning at like 5.30 a.m. I have a flight, so probably won't even sleep tonight. By the time I get back up home, it's gonna be like 2 a.m. But that is the life of toe testing, living the dream. Good luck. Thanks, see ya. <sighs> We're taking reliable transportation. This thing takes like what? Four minutes to charge? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Three minutes? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So another Y plugged in over there in between this white one and the one at the end. And I'm still getting 112 kilowatts, which is pretty good. I can't complain. It's better than 50. Um, it says I need another 10 minutes here to make it to Parachute, which is the next stop, which is like, uh, let's see rifle is right here i'm just gonna go to parachute deep charge and then probably stop in eagle or somewhere over in this area the frisco area uh it's probably going to be the most efficient way of doing it because these are 250 and they have a corner stall which i'll be easier to plug into because right now i am blocking two chargers all right Team Lightning is heading out 84%, so a little bit of a deeper charge, not as deep as Kyle, but I also don't think I'll need to because I, unlike Kyle, am going to make a stop. So we are done. We are heading out. Uh, oh my gosh, just a breeze. We just passed 9,000 miles on this truck in case anyone was wondering. So let's move on. And we have tapered down to 50, so I'm going to be here for a little bit longer, unfortunately. <clears throat> it says 4% now, um, which is fine, but like I said, I really don't want to risk it, so I'll probably wait a little bit till that's a bit higher. And maybe if this white Tesla leaves, I can back up, uh, back up to my original spot and go get more juice, which would be nice. Um, glad I got my photo in first, but unfortunately Andreas, I think is ahead of me. Now I have a bit higher efficiency on my side, so that could help me potentially. I don't know what his charging strategy is on the way back, but I think it'll be a close race between me and Andreas. Although I don't know, he has better charging. So realistically, I'm gonna come in third and only because Timon hit a really bad charging stop. Um, so really on paper, this Ford should have come in last, but who knows? There's also the driver to be considered with these races. So there's two Teslas now waiting over there. Just met these people. They're pretty awesome. Um, uh, it says I'm going to get to parachute with 10%. So I'm just going to send it, go probably 65 the entire way, nice and slow. 
uh, maybe even a bit of 60 just to make it, make sure that I make it there. All right, we're back on the road. Just stopped at the Starbucks, got my picture, and let's go. 10%, 47 miles, 43%. I got this in the bag. Now it's time to catch up to some people. All right, this just in, I have decided to call an audible. I am, instead of going to rifle, gonna go to parachute really quick and try out the possibility of the lightning charging a bit faster uh, with a bit higher voltage in the pack. So either way, I have to charge at Edwards. That's basically a non-negotiable, um, unless I wanna try to push it to like Silverthorne, but that's just a horrible charger. So Edwards is on the list. So whether I charge in parachute or rifle, doesn't matter, I still have to charge at Edwards. I'm only 90 miles from Edwards, so I'm just gonna charge in parachute really quick, maybe blast to 80%. Um, which shouldn't take too long because I'm going to arrive with like 52% uh, and then blast to Edwards. So we'll see. But I just got the driving range low because this truck still has not figured out what it can do on a charge. It's just completely off. Timon called me and said he recommends I stop for 30 minutes to let the truck reset itself. I, <laughs> I see what he's doing there. Not going to do that. So I should, in theory, run to Timon at Parachute but I think Andreas is going on to rifle. Okay, jumping off the highway to parachute. Uh, the supercharger is just over there somewhere and 12 stalls, 11 of which are available. So I also know I will basically be guaranteed something, some way to plug in fairly easily. Uh, I'm not sure about timing. I know he's had to, he hasn't had to, well, yeah, he did it on hitch once, but he, Hopefully won't have to unhitch this time. Not sure, but this way I can get my charging stop done a bit sooner out of the way. So only a third of a mile off the highway should be pretty easy to get to. And this is actually my first time at the parachute charger, so that's pretty cool. Here we are in rifle, and we're pulling off. And the good thing about this supercharger is it's right off the interstate. Uh, so we won't lose lots of time. Can't believe it, there is a Dunkin' Donuts. So happy. And here's a supercharger and a Sonic. Hello. 15 burgers, please. So I'll just uh, pull in here. All right, plugged in. Please work. Please plug and charge. I don't want to have to deal with this. I really wish the lightning would also tell you the rate at which it's charging. There's so much obvious data going through the truck and they're just not actually telling you. But this flashing is promising, so I think we'll work. Notice my curb parking job, nice spot on the end here. Not really blocking anyone because there's such a huge expanse of parking lot. And we should, oh, there we go, cooling has started. So we are fast charging. Um, so I think I'll go to, I mean, no more than 80%, honestly maybe even cut it short just to see if I can beat the other guys to Edwards. It's really just Andreas that I'm worried about. Although if Timon comes in here and rips right away at his peak charging speed of 250 plus kilowatts, then I might be worried a bit. Yeah, here we go. Okay. And open. And put it inside. Let's see. Turn green, turn green, turn, turn green. Please, 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 please. please. On, come on, yes, yes, very good, nice. Well, we are starting to get some crazy wind and rain, so I'm not sure if there's a big storm coming in or what's going on, but I've just been cruising, honestly, under the speed limit, just been doing 70 the whole time. Um, you know, with these conditions, everyone's doing 70 as well, to be honest, so it's not like I'm going slower than anyone. Uh, we're down to a 16% projected arrival, 162 miles to go and the truck is predicting 165 miles of range. So yeah, again, if we have to stop one time, it's not the end of the world, uh, and we would only need a few kilowatt hours. So yeah, let's just uh, see what happens. This weather might cause us to need to stop. All right, we've already ramped to 55%. Still no idea what I'm actually charging at. Uh, I actually don't have access to the phone app. Um, that wasn't quite sorted yet. I don't know if that actually tells you anyways, but. 56, all right, it's ramping up. Again, the miles of range thing is just completely weird and wrong, so. But yeah, I guess I may as well charge to 80% because of the flatness of this curve. And then blast to Edwards and hope to get there with something decent. Oh shit, I just noticed that. Stop the station. Let's, uh, plug it back in. 
Let's see. Let's do this again. Unplugged try again. Shit, what is that? Don't have time for that. And lose time. Okay, so I just unplugged the handle from the adapter. And also the adapter from the charge port. Let's see. Come on, turn green. No, red. Okay, let's try a different stall. Okay. All right, let's try this again. I got big red behind me and the car was just preconditioning for the supercharger. We estimated arrival is 9%. I am currently at 12%. Um, only have six miles to go, so it's looking pretty good. I'm only 15 minutes behind Jordan, so if I charge efficiently enough and drive efficiently enough, I should be able to beat him. I'm just hoping that he has some type of issue when it comes to charging on the supercharging network, but fingers crossed, we should be good. Uh, let's see, turn green, please. Please. Yes, and stay green. Let's see. Okay, just keep going, Rivian. Keep going. And test the charger. <laughs> yes, ramp up. All right, so time in is almost here to the uh, parachute supercharger. As you can tell, it's completely empty. So he's going to be able to take whatever he wants, honestly. But there is a pull-in station, so he could actually take full advantage of that, which is cool. Um, I'm at 72%, 71%. So I think I'm gonna charge till, I guess I may as well charge till 80 because I have to charge in Edwards and the curve's so flat that it won't really matter. So gonna blast over to Edwards, hopefully shortly after Timon arrives. I was hoping to blast over right when he arrives, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be close. He's almost exiting the highway. So yeah bit close with me and Timon. He has faster charging, but I am a little bit ahead of him. But uh, Andreas, I don't know. I guess he already made it to Rifle um, probably shortly after I got here and he has faster charging. So it's going to take a miracle for me to catch him. And look who it is. It is Jordan Shifa. Did I just turn the wrong way? It's very possible, uh, but this way might be easier for me, but I didn't know he was, I thought he was gonna stop and rifle, but it looks like he's, we're empty here. So that's perfect. I can just block a couple spots because there looks like there's plenty here. Oh, would you look at that? Perfect, right there for me. Pull in and take all of them. Nope, he's gonna try to do that and not jackknife. Nice. Come on. Voila. 100, 113. Fans are kicking up. You can hear it. And we're doing 170. I love to see it. I love to see it. So we sh showed up at, pulled in at like 7%. Um, let's do uh, Lakewood. Oh, I can do this. Oh, it took me like eight tries, but I finally jumped the curb and I could reach Yeah, them. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'm going to go to Edwards next. Which is only 89 miles. What will it say you need? Because we are climbing 2,500 feet to get to Edwards. 2,500, that's nothing for this thing. That's right. <laughs> I'll probably overcharge a little bit. I pulled it. It said 10 arrival. I showed up with 7. Ooh, okay. But it's been pretty damn accurate. Yeah. Two hours, though. God damn. <laughs> They can't even calculate it. I'm not stopping in Glenwood Springs again. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, is there anything else? No, Glenwood Springs is the only option. Yeah, don't do that. And Rifle's a joke to go to, because that's where Andreas went. Yeah, you were just there. Um, it still doesn't say? No. Why? I don't know. Why'd you um, not go to Rifle? Because my car charging curve is so flat, I may as well just charge here and then set up. How long are you gonna charge here for? Uh, I'm basically done. Ah, oh, damn it. I was hoping to see what yours, because my truck can't give me any estimates. The lightning has no- What percent idea. are you at? 75, so I'm gonna go. Oh. But I, just, I don't know. I mean, I the would- The climb makes me nervous, but- yeah, I would just send it to 85 or something. Yeah. <laughs> 90. <laughs> yeah, why not? All right, 78%, 79%, we're calling it. Jesus.
We got 87 miles until we get to Edwards. Andreas is still at rifle, so every single bit of driving I do right now uh, to catch up to him is good. Now, I do have a little tiny bit of a crosswind, and it's currently 75 mile an hour speed limit, but I don't know if I wanna push it because I do have to climb elevation as well. So, yeah, not sure. I, I'm sure I'll make it, but just by how much, I don't know. Did I overcharge? Not really an issue for me to be worried about because I don't have the same charging curve as the other guys. So maybe Timon will overcharge and then he'll regret it. Uh, whereas in my case, I'm probably okay. I don't think I can compete with Andreas' situation. That's the reality. Alrighty, just ran into viewers. Uh, it's funny, just came over and we're like, how's the race going? <laughs> like it's a national, uh, you know, national coverage here. Uh, and they actually told me they saw the Cybertruck, they passed the Cybertruck. So Timon, apparently you're right behind me. So I gotta watch out. <laughs> uh, charging station is still going well, 121. We've got snack of champions here. Cliff Bar, Nutella sticks, and a yellow Red Bull. I'm all set for the rest of the night. Let's whip it. It's at 37%. Jordan already left, which sucks, but it still is not giving me any inclination of how far we've got. Technically, I can make it, but as Jordan said, it's all uphill. So I really don't want to risk it or do 30 miles an hour, which would really suck. We are going through the tunnel in Glenwood Springs. You know, there's actually a fire station in the middle of this tunnel. Uh, that might be a door. I don't know. There's one in here. I watched a video on it recently. Pretty cool. And um, showing 13% arrival in Denver. Looking good. So it's holding steady. I've just been going pretty slow, to be honest. Slow and steady here. It's not the Kyle Connor way, but when you have this much range and this annoying of a charge port to get in with chargers, I'd rather just go slow, cruise, make it there. I mean, I'm still going, I'm actually going a little bit too fast. I'm going like five over, you know, to me that's slow and the range is awesome. I, damn, this thing is cool. Let's keep rolling. Jordan just passed me. I can uh, track his location. <laughs> so, uh, I thought he would pull in here actually. So he just passed me. Uh, time is still charging in a uh, parachute. Carl is already out in like Pennsylvania, I guess. It's still not showing me an arrival. Oh, now it is. Actually, that's good. So five miles arrival. There's no wind. Uh, so this should be very accurate. 10 miles, I guess, should be safe. Maybe 15, just to be sure. 70% I want to see. And yeah, 70, perfect. Let's go. Alrighty, let's do this. Here. Oh, oh yeah, let's see. We are underway, finished charging which is super nice. I've been tired of being here, but we are at 80% doing 89 miles uphill. I probably overcharged a lot, but the car says I'll get there with 11%. So we shall see. I had a nice couple come and ask a bunch of questions. They didn't even know what car it was and he worked for Chevy. My plan is to do roughly 65 miles an hour until I get a buffer or at least to where the percent is higher than the range I have to go. Um, I'm not too worried about not making it. I can always go slower, but I just want to make sure that um, I do it all correctly is the main point. And so I don't have to get tow charged. Four, 30, 40 minutes behind Jordan, which sucks. And Andreas, or Jordan is ahead of Andreas, so I do have a chance of catching up to Andreas, but I don't think I have a chance of catching up to Jordan. It's just a real bummer about the yeah, Glenwood Springs, which now is like a backup, but we shall see. And we are merging onto the highway, and I'm about to watch some F1 because it's almost that time. Uh, Max for stop on is gonna win and i'm not at least one dutch guy is winning today um but it is kind of nice having this rear view camera at least at night because you can still see that the model 3 is there which is sweet i don't have to worry as much of it being gone because i can't really tell out of the mirrors it's kind of just non-existent it's passing through uh, glenwood springs here i wonder if jordan's charging here i don't know, but I know actually uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll just keep driving. <laughs> Viewers, you join me in the Silverado. It is, of course, nighttime. We're coming up through the ski areas. We're in Edwards right now. 
we need to decide, do we plug in in Edwards or do we go over the passes? Uh, I'm going a little bit slow, just to build up buffer. We got a huge lead, we're coming into the city. I've been going like 65 most of the time, but I figured I would just drop it here so we had some time to think about this. 39% state of charge and we have 101 miles to go, but we have to climb up Vale Pass and up to the Eisenhower Tunnel. Uh, yeah, I think we just go for it. Worst case, if we run out, it shouldn't be a big deal. It shows a 9% arrival, but the only thing that worries me is it doesn't show me the graph of the usage throughout it. I know I'm gonna regen on the way down, and I hope this thing is like, if you, you know, obviously if I make it to the top of the hill, we're gonna regen and charge a few percent. So we might be at like 5% at the tunnel, but as long as we're, we make it and the thing doesn't hit turtle mode or anything, we should be okay. So fingers crossed. I think we just go for it. It's nighttime. There's not much traffic on the road. Let's send it. Worst case, we got one of the trucks behind us. They can just push us. Once we get to the top, we can charge up the battery on the way down. We're going to give the Silverado everything we got. If I knew it was going to rain and uh, honestly, the, the temperatures, the wind, the weather really hammering us right now. If I knew it was going to be this bad, I would have just done a full charge. But uh, nope, I left a little bit early, but that's always the the out of spec way. Always keep it squeaky close. I am in Vail, Colorado, and it has just started snowing. <laughs> it's 39 degrees out, but uh, maybe at the top of the hill. We're at about 8,200 feet of elevation here is where Vail is, but Vail Pass goes again to, into the tens. So we might actually have some slippery conditions up there. And then of course, going up to uh, the Eisenhower Tunnel, we'll see how that goes. I'm at 32% state of charge. I'm hoping I can do both hill climbs without stopping. Um, we've now gotten our buffer up to 10%. With this weather, I've just kept it slow actually, just in case. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll know, I'll know a little bit more about this truck's behavior after the first Vail Pass climb, which we're about to do right now. And then of course the second climb uh, after Silver, Silverthorn up to the tunnel, that's gonna be another curious one to see if this thing can output that much energy at such low state of charge to get me up. Once I get to the tunnel, I can make it to Denver. We just need to get this thing to the top of the tunnel. It has legit turned into a snowstorm. We are in the snowstorm right now. Now, uh, both the Silverado, I should say all the Silverado and the uh, F-150 Lightning, they're just on regular all season tires. The Cybertruck is on all terrain tires, but the Cybertruck does not ship on triple peak snow rated tires. And they're honestly terrible in slippery conditions. Uh, the roads are still pretty dry, but once this starts sticking, time it's really got to take it easy. And then Andreas is lucky. He's on studded Hakapalita uh, tires no, from Nokian. So he'll be just fine. Uh, with the studs and uh, that's what the those things are built for is this type of uh, condition So anyway, yeah tires make a difference the Rivian's the only vehicle here. That's not a hundred percent factory It has the little bed cover which honestly probably helps it a little bit uh, with the overland rough racks and Yep, the plows are just rolling out over here uh, the Overland Rough Racks and the uh, tires. It also has the 22 inch wheels, but those are factory wheels. So I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video, but uh, forgot to, sorry. Wow, conditions are deteriorating quickly. Road is getting slippery, can feel it for sure. And just going to be taking it very gently and very easy. We are almost to the top of El Pass. It is that second ridge right in front of us. And uh, it's showing a 10% arrival to the charger. So I'm thinking we're okay from a state of charge perspective. We have enough energy to make it back. Now it's just driving in a Colorado snowstorm, which is very slippery, which we just slipped. Holy smokes. Welcome to the top of Vail Pass. Literally cannot see a thing. <laughs> this is What you're seeing is what I'm seeing. It's pretty crazy conditions here. I wish I had some fog lights, but no fog lights on the Silverado EV work truck at the moment, or really ever installed. That guy's going for it slippery and we are climbing the problem with this driving is honestly it's easier to see the lanes in the mirror behind us than in front of us only because um you know the roads all chewed up so the fog line on the right is just like basically gone the lane markings are basically gone and i just can't even see them so 
we're kind of almost driving by Braille, but we're gonna try not to crash into anything here. Just keep it going. I thought we were almost at the top, but this keeps climbing. And we are down to 24% state of charge. So things are going well. We are literally on snow and I just called Jordan to tell the guys, do not come up here. I mean, Andreas would be fine on the winter tires, no problem at all. I mean, I tow with my Rivian in the snow all the time. I just worry about, you know, U-Haul trailers with non-winter tires, especially those Cybertruck tires will suck. We know that the Silverado is going to smoke the other ones. I'm already here. I can pretty much make it to the end. Uh, now it's, uh, you know, it, uh, of course, it'd be interesting to see the difference between those three. But yeah, we just need to keep safety in mind. And well, yeah, we just got to go really slow here and take it easy. All right, well, this just in, Kyle said he's having issues on Vail Pass, and I am the first one here at Edwards. I guess I may as well plug in at EA because then I'll actually know exactly how fast I'm charging, and I don't know, we'll see how this station looks as far as towing friendliness, but he's saying do not even try to go over Vail Pass, so... This is why we should have started earlier. Uh, yeah. Charger way over here on the end with a fairly long stop behind me. That's nice, okay. I'll try plugging in right here. Two hand a job to get this cable in, but nice long cables, which are great. Let's see if this works. Then we'll go do some checking on things in the truck. I'm also gonna look at some weather reports see if we can figure out whether the storm will just pass through. Okay, pulling off here, exit 163, Edwards. I already see the EA station. I wanna try to test the one though, because the handshake is quicker. All right, ramping up as expected. And uh, yeah, settling in at 145. Yeah, so I'm just about at my, like not far below my peak speed not enough for me to really care <laughs> and I actually like where I'm at right now not blocking a single charger not blocking traffic so that's unique and that allows some time for ha huh, there's Andreas with the Rivian oh he's going to the Tesla welcome to Edwards <laughs> let's see 10% nice yeah it's pretty perfect yeah so, uh, all right let's see what it ramps up to it's already past mine <laughs> been here for five minutes uh not even like two minutes okay we are passing copper mountain now it definitely seems like the snow is a little bit lighter on this side i can actually see lines on the road and we are not just slipping all over the place uh man it was so slippery you just lift off the throttle and you're in like you know regen brake control basically and uh, abs essentially right away and so it's like oh boy <laughs> i you know for me i'm cool with this guys i know you know i i love driving in the mountains i love driving in the snow i love a challenge but i the last thing i want to do is put my friends at risk for no reason uh for a stupid video about towing so i'd rather them just wait on that side until the storm either passes or for them just to get hotels spend the night and go in the morning so at the moment we're gonna check on the weather maybe you see some radar maps yeah. I don't know, Celsius in case you guys go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Celsius. <laughs> uh, like a German. So I don't know. We could we could look at radar, but that doesn't always tell you like exactly what's happening on the pass. Like a very localized snowstorm yeah. doesn't really mean much. Oh uh, yeah, I mean I, I was driving blind for about twenty minutes and then, you know, sometimes you're just driving on snow and you don't know what's the edge of the road and what's not. And you know, the the worst part is the the blizzard, the wind is towards me, it feels like. So uh -huh. I'm just driving into an endless white cloud or, you know, speckles of snow. The weather has definitely improved as I'm coming to Frisco, and it sounds like maybe the storm had come across, um, you know, sort of a north-south rather than an east-west, so it wasn't just going to be consistent. Uh, if this is the case, then the, the road surface, I would say, yeah, slippery, but if the guys take it easy, they'll be okay. It was more of a visibility issue than anything, I would say. Our arrival is now back up to 10%. So I'm very much uh, pleased here. I'm glad we're out of the craziness. Jordan says that it's gonna be uh, fine weather conditions for the rest of the drive. Just definitely was like, I guess I went right through the worst possible time. <laughs> People were 
people were just not, uh, th thankfully they all left me in my little bubble. I didn't really have to deal with really many cars, but people were sliding around and, and just pulling off the road and stopping. And here we go, it's the start of the climb. Of course, we're not running an official TFL run here, but it does always feel fun. Every time I'm on this stretch, I'm like, dang, I'm feeling like I'm doing a test at TFL, a big towing test. But uh, nope, we are at 22% taking it easy on the uphill. And of course, we don't have very much weight on this vehicle. It's only, you know, not nearly as much as its capabilities could do. So yeah, let's uh, get on up there, back up to 10,000 feet. Andreas is charging. You've already basically caught up to me, 44%. I'm at 46%. You're still at over 200 kilowatts. Yep. So your charging is blowing past me now. And the truck says you would arrive with three miles. Um, so basically our, our efficiency is really similar, but yep. your charging is overtaking mine. You arrived here like two minutes after I did yep. and you already have um you're you're passing my level which will give you enough room to get back yeah. um so basically what we know is that rivian wins barely the lightning would come in very close after you yeah which is good news i think because yeah, the lightning sure. needed some retribution after yes. the last trip. <laughs> exactly and what's kind of surprising is the tesla is last yeah cyber truck but uh we can talk about that when time and gets here time. <laughs> but i think we're actually going to basically call the results of the race because this is our this is all of our last charge yeah. kyle got to skip it because he has a huge battery yeah. so it's the really edwards charging is what determines two three and four positions and we know you would be in second i would be barely behind you in third yeah. and timon would get here timon's 20 minutes away so he would get okay. here or 15 minutes away so he'd get here after we're already left that's right so yeah. we know the finishing order already but what we're not going to do is finish the race in race form because of the storm. Yes. Kyle said the conditions are actually okay. It's just like the physical road conditions. It's just the actual blizzard is white out, but it's also splotchy according to radar. Yeah. So we, I think we're going to ease our way over. Yeah, we don't want to risk anything, especially with trailers yeah. and uh, heavy loads. And so we're going to go very tires. slow, yeah. slow and steady wins the race or in exactly. our case loses the race yeah kyle wins the race all three of us lose <laughs> yeah. yeah i think that's fair uh you know safety first um and uh yeah nothing would change in the order anyway i guess so yeah, yeah. so yeah not really cheating the race it's not like it's not the ending we were hoping for but yeah. Kyle can't stop with us. He has to go make a flight um, for family stuff. So we are going to just finish it ourselves. Well, I couldn't imagine much more that would stress the cell so hard, just sitting at constant load. The battery pack has got to be cold. It's again, freezing outside, below freezing. And um, we're at low state of charge. So 21% and we're doing the climb and it's cold. That's honestly pretty tough on a battery pack. So. Yeah, this will be a great, actually a great test of the Silverado. We've been climbing for some time and even at 20% state of charge, this thing has 380 plus kilowatts of power available to pull us up. Really, really solid performance at relatively low state of charge. A lot of EVs will start limiting at 20%. Lightning starts limiting at about 25%. It gives you a power cut. Um, this certainly wasn't doing 400 kilowatts out, so we are getting some power limit as well but 380 kilowatts is more than enough and honestly we only need about 100 150 to climb this hill consistently under worst case scenarios so yeah very impressed here with the silverado doing this in cold temps at low state of charge climbing the hill just sitting constant load there is the eisenhower tunnel we have made it up and uh, the amount of percentage that we used was not much we went from 22 to 14 so we used eight percent to get up here and uh, I've had climate control going as well so all is nice we've arrived now time for the descent it's uh, 50 miles to our charger and again the truck thinks that we're only going to use 4% it's pretty smart because it shows you know 31 miles of gaso meter range in the left but then it also shows a 10% arrival after 49 miles of driving so it shows you that this is not taking into account the navigation data but this number, of course, is looking at elevation and all the other factors. And I'd say, I would say this could still use some tuning, especially while towing. I'll have to play around with it a little bit more without a trailer, but we're in the tunnel, we're cruising, time to regen. We're just cruising now, and Max Verstappen is out of the Australian Grand Prix. 
And so, like, no Dutch people are winning tonight. Um, hopefully, Lando Norris gets to second. If not first, Charles Leclerc or Carlos Sainz, please crash to make the grid closer. But um, we're only five miles from Edwards now, six minutes, 17% left, 16% left. We are taking the exit, and the boys should be over here somewhere as well. I got to figure out where to go. It might just be right there. It looks like it's just right there. I can see some charging handles or stations lit up. All right, so I am here sitting at 80% state of charge, which means mine has just started to taper. I'm guessing Andreas's has tapered already. Oh, and he's just now getting to 80%. So that's interesting. He was beating me until his charging slowed way down after 70%. Mine slowed way down after 80%. So, yep. We already know he would have left before me, which means he would have gotten back before me because we're all following the same rules. But here comes a Cybertruck right as we would have, actually, we would have left like probably 10 minutes ago. The chaos of the charging port location on the Cybertruck. Literally the only port he can use yeah. is like he has to come in the wrong direction to get over here and then Andreas has to move because right now there's no way for timing to fit on any of these uh <laughs> so Andreas is gonna back up yep. call charging complete we're both at 80 percent now well the snow has stopped just now and we are pulling into Georgetown I gotta pee I want to check the trailer I'm gonna go hard on the regen 180 kilowatts right there we're just going to stop at that Circle K. We don't need to charge. There are chargers just down over that away. But we're just going to pop in here, quick truck inspection, make sure we're all good, grab a coffee, pee, and make sure, uh, and then we'll, I guess, what am I trying to say? We'll hit the road. I'm getting tired. But uh, like a little coffee break shouldn't hurt anyone. Let's do it. So we've got it charging, pulled in through that way, which isn't technically the way to go, but we're going. We're moving 250 kilowatts. And now to charge up, and then we're all going to mob home. I think Andres would be the first to leave, so he'll take the victory out of us three. Kyle's already halfway home. He's past Breckenridge. Um, I would be last, unfortunately, and then uh, Jordan would be second out of this group. Quick little check on everything. Oh, no, our Model 3 got covered. But, yeah, all is good. Lights are working as expected and okay just was covered up by snow in the mirror so we're safe we are on pretty much the final descent down into denver this is the hogback loop again a lot of you guys are probably familiar with this using a lot of regen here and uh just coming down beautiful views absolutely gorgeous weather conditions are nice well above freezing now and the guys are going to attempt to go over the hills i am exiting i-70 wow just about at midnight we are finishing up i'm one mile away from the charging station i have 14 percent state of charge plenty left over and i think we crested the hill at 14 percent state of charge so we've driven uh i don't know 50 miles 40 miles without really burning anything welcome to the supercharger where it all started we are gonna get this thing plugged in right over here it is looking fairly busy there's a couple cars here there's an id4 there and there's a something there but i think what i can do is kind of just block these two stations it is midnight i'm only going to be here for a few minutes and i should be able to reach the handle over so let's just get this thing plugged in my stats for the trip before we do that 472.2 miles 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour and i have arrived back with 67 miles projected which is a bit optimistic because we've come downhill 14 percent remaining very nice so whoa almost hit the pole but thankfully had just enough room oh, oh got lucky don't want to ding chevy's truck all right i think the cable should reach if not i can inch it a little closer man this thing is dirty and the rear charge port sucks for towing this is terrible what were they thinking put a front charge port on your tow vehicle Please, everyone, pull-throughs are nice in your press brochures, but they don't exist in reality. Well, there you guys go. The EV towing craziness comes to an end for me. The colleagues and friends are still on their way. 
Um, but no question, we knew the Silverado was gonna crush this. What I didn't know is that it was gonna crush it so hard. 500 miles of towing, nearest makes no difference, one charging stop. That kind of works, that works. And that was over the entire Rocky Mountain range, twice, and then on the way back in a blizzard. <laughs> okay, this is the first time I've really experienced an electric truck that I might actually start to recommend for towing. Still no question a diesel is gonna be better at this. A combustion engine is gonna be better at this. And even a combustion engine in sort of a hybrid or diesel electric situation, uh, like a locomotive, there's the Ram charger that uses a gas V6 to act as a generator to charge the battery. Okay, that works. That's gonna be a cool solution. But if you just wanna be full battery electric, well, this is about as close as you can get to a combustion-like experience. Um, wow, Chevy freaking nailed it. Just put all the batteries in this thing. And let me tell you, I, yes, I just bought the Cybertruck. The customer version of the Silverado is not on sale yet. I don't know ever what I'll do in the future, but if I have to tow a lot and I still wanna to tow electric, well, this is going to be on my short list. You know, the consumer one with Super Cruise and all the other nice stuff in there because I like features. So crazy. Still sitting at 360 kilowatts. What a freaking beast. 361 kilowatts just pegged. And, you know, it wants more. The charger is just limited. 25% pegged. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching this one. I'll let the guys finish off the video, but uh, that's it for me for this episode. Absolutely amazing. Not the most efficient vehicle. It's heavy. But damn, it doesn't matter when you put that many batteries in it and you have crazy fast charging. Love it. Needs a front charging port. We survived. Oh yeah. Look at this. Where's the rag at? Hey Drew, your car looks great. <laughs> Wheels are still shiny. Ish. Holy cow. We just had to wipe off Timon's headlights. Ter terrible design, but I think that's clean now. So I got them all pretty much cleaned up last night at 4 a.m. when the rest of us finally got into town. We were definitely a bit jealous of Kyle's Silverado EV experience, but what can we deduce from the rest of the three trucks. Basically, it was actually kind of close. Other than some route optimization issues by time in the Cybertruck, which of course, I think the Cybertruck probably would have won if he had not hit those V2 superchargers. There is always a better way to route it, but I don't know, it wasn't super obvious in the truck perhaps, or it was a later start than we thought, so our brains were not quite as up to speed. But either way, we all pretty much got similar efficiency 1.3 ish miles per kilowatt hour as an entire trip as a whole which is honestly not terrible um that was meaning an average of 150 miles to a charge for my truck um actually probably even a bit more just depending on the elevation gains and descents and stuff so definitely interesting towing through the mountains you don't want to treat it like flat land and equate everything uh you, you don't want to be like oh i made 150 miles between the last set of chargers so i'll do it again you just don't know. There's so many different elevation gains, and unless your vehicle takes that into account, which this Lightning currently does not, at least not that it was working at the time of filming, then yeah, you don't want to risk it. But all that to say, we all did the same adventure with the same exact payload, and it honestly worked out quite well. It didn't take too long other than the snow delays and stuff, but even though the race was kind of interrupted by that, we could deduce with that being the last charging stop that yes, indeed, with this race, Silverado UV came first, Lightning came in barely third because the Rivian edged me out because of his faster charging, and the Cybertruck dead last. But yeah, as Kyle has shown us, um, just a lot of battery can give you enough towing capacity to actually get somewhere without stopping an annoying amount. Actually, every time we stopped, I was like good to use a quick bathroom break and stuff, but Kyle just was able to bookie it all the way over the mountains on one charge and then all the way back on one charge. And he didn't even charge to 100% in Grand Junction. Close-ish, but not quite 100. So I guess brute force works. 
just throw a bunch of batteries in it and you can go further. So maybe the Cybertruck will get its range extender. But honestly, what I'm really intrigued by is the Dodge situation. You know, having a Ram with like a plug-in hybrid type thing, more of a, a gas assisted battery pack that could get you long distances. And that's what intrigues me. So I can't wait to tow with that. Anyways, thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video, a fun towing test over the mountains, through the snow, and to grandmother's house we go. <laughs>